Hello, and welcome to Barovia. I am your humble master of dungeons and keeper of flame skulls, I mean dragons, Pixel, and I am pleased to present to you the flaming skulls lurking just on the other side of the door, 31st episode of Ages of Minor presents The Curse of Strahd. Hello, what's up everybody? Welcome, welcome my friends. As always, we are going to get into things here in just a minute. But before we do, we're going to go over usual housekeeping things. But before we even do that, I want to point out to everybody, uh, we have some new indicators on our screens. You're going to see them next to everybody's little names there. If you're watching, uh, uh, we have little hearts. So the little hearts indicate people who have not yet had their hit dice for a given session. So I have a button when somebody has their hit dice redeemed, I will be able to remove their heart some kingdom heart stuff here we'll remove the heart from the screen and that will indicate that they are no longer eligible to have a hit dice redeemed um as in addition to the inspiration indicators which you will see with the little uh the little dice we're just uh, we're constantly up in the game trying to bring you folks the best content that we can and hopefully the fun little bells and whistles and all the extra work i put in in the long hours in the middle of the night when i slave over the stream hopefully it's worth it anyway um but as always we're gonna go over those extra brief hopefully uh housekeeping things first things first on map screens don't spoil stuff uh especially now they are a dungeon crawling, so don't talk to them about stuff that's grayed out or semi-transparent, whether that's monsters you see behind the door, whether that's secret tunnels, secret passageways, hidden doorways, any kind of that stuff you guys might be able to see, because you're getting all the DM information as you look at these maps. Uh, don't talk about that in chat, because our players do not want to be spoiled. They want to experience this as genuine as they can. Second, don't freak out about rules. There's a lot of them in this game, and sometimes I don't remember them all and make stuff up. Uh, or sometimes I make stuff up because it's cooler. So, uh, if we're trying to, like, remember a ruling and how something works, you can let us know in chat. But if we don't see that, we're not going to go back and try to fix that. We'll just try and get it right next time. Third, this is an open, open and welcoming space. Uh, so don't be a wang rod. Keep the internet toxicity out of here. Uh, it's never a problem with you guys. You're amazing. But we do like to make sure that we uh, put that warning up front for anyone who wanders by our YouTube or who... Um, happens to pop in in the middle of things uh don't be a jerk uh fourth this adventure is horror themed and as such may contain elements that are unpleasant or disturbing uh we're not aiming for any kind of excessive amounts of graphic content but in the context of a live stream it's certainly not going to be possible for us to do any kind of trigger warning content warning stuff uh there could be body horrors or you know giant bugs or who knows what your particular uh issue is uh we do try to put those content warnings on our uh, YouTube and podcast feeds, if those are concerns for you, um, you may want to consume this in those ways. Uh, and as a reminder, we do release the show on YouTube and as a podcast after each episode during the following week, as I just alluded to. So if you miss an episode or have to miss part of an episode tonight because you just have to tear yourself away from the incredible spectacle that is our wondrous performances, <laughs> you can always catch it after the fact. Uh, the show goes live for everybody on Wednesday following the uh friday night show um and you'll have a week and a half to catch up or if you're on our patreon you get early release on sunday uh, and of course last thing before we get started cast if you would please go around and introduce yourselves as well as your characters and remind us if you have the inspiration before we begin starting with old vinnie page i'm always inspired when i'm here Oh, that's where you put that. Anyway, I'm Vincent Page, <laughs> and tonight I'm playing Ash Fireforge, the Changeling Rogue, who does currently have, as I said, inspiration. <clears throat> Wonderful. Uh, Omega. Uh, hey, all. Uh, my name is uh, Omega. I'm playing uh, Pete uh, Walhorn, uh, and I currently have chat inspiration. Excellent. Um, Ozzy. Mozzie, I'm playing Cast Amble Crown tonight, and we have a plan. Is they've been <laughs> they've been frantically <laughs> trying to make this plan um, since uh, the, the whole time. Lead, like the, the intro was playing, they were still frantically planning. Uh, bonus bomb. Shut up. Hi. 
I am Bonus Mom, and tonight I'm playing Wandrous, the nature domain cleric, who is in the background busily preparing Turn Undead. And I do not have chat inspiration. And Bonus Mom, could you scooch that mic just a smidgen closer? No. Please? Well said. <laughs> I'll start pop, pop, pop. There you go. Okay, no, is that's that a fine. better place? Yeah, you sound great there. Okay. It's, it was like you were up. a little bit far enough away that it was noticeably quieter than everyone else, which is a nightmare for me when I'm trying to Okay, well, I'll do better nope, now. Opposite, not that. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, right in the middle. Okay, great. Well, as you all know, I am Pixel. I am your uh, Flaming Skulls of Death. Oh, Bonus Mom does have inspiration now. I'm your Flaming Skulls of Death, your mysterious lightning spells from the dark, uh, your freezing cold environment, and all of the other nasty things we have in store for our adventurers this evening. Uh, you can also find me here on twitch.tv slash hammer and pixel, where I uh, have been playing Baldur's Gate 3. So in case you didn't get enough D&D... To begin with, uh, there's more to be had. So, um, that all having been said, and without further ado, when last we left our heroes, we began with our heroes charging into this room where they currently find themselves. We're going to pop over to the map now so you can see it. The room where they currently found themselves. They charged in and slew a huge group of people that were in there for some reason. We're not really sure. We didn't bother to find out, uh, but that's okay because they certainly weren't friendly when we got in there. So they had cast, I believe it was Hypnotic Pattern and take, took several of the weaker ones out of the picture and were able to focus their fight and uh, kill the Dire Wolf, the Champion, Gladiator, and all of the Berserkers. Uh, then they opened the door to the north here uh, to discover three flaming skulls who immediately started shooting fire at them. They slammed the door and decided to go investigate other ways. Uh, let's see. I believe they investigated some of these rooms to the south here uh, near the doorway before deciding to um, go down the stairs into the lower level of the temple. As they reached the bottom of the stairs, the skulls fired fireballs at them from the arrow slits above the stairs and there was a massive lightning spell that shot at them from a huge statue across the other side of the room um this was a huge surprise our poor characters received uh, quite a bit of explosion and damage except for ash who remained relatively safe uh, and then they squirreled away back into the room they had come from to try to uh hole up and figure out what they were going to do next and that, of course, is where we find them now. So they are here in this strange and creepy tomb or whatever this place is. Um, they're sitting in the room where they had previously uh, fought. The, 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 the floor is covered in uh, f sticky, freezing blood. And uh, they are discussing now what to do next. Uh, team, I will turn it over to you. Take it away. Okay, let's not go back down the stairs. That was terrifying. I, I think, think we our... have to get rid of those things that shot us from the holes in the hallway. Yeah, I think so, too. It also is a really big risk for us to try to run across the other side of the balcony with that statue or whatever. Yeah. Uh, shooting lightning everywhere. Well, especially now that uh, they're aware that we're here. So, um, I, uh, best I can do is um, either uh, do a good cast shatter or I could also viciously mock them <laughs> or even try to create a minor illusion and try to trick them but ultimately I I don't really have much else unfortunately at this point so well their skeleton heads I guess that whatever they were was once alive did anyone get a, enough of a glance that's what it looked like to me yeah maybe like I could skulls. Maybe I could use uh, 
one of my channel divinity points. I, I actually have two. I could attempt to turn them undead. If I do that, they'll spend all their time trying to get away. And perhaps, well, that will stop if we attack them, but perhaps the rest of you could attack them one at a time instead of having all three fireballs come at us at once. I might be able to get in there with my hidden step. I can turn invisible. Um, they might not see me. Esmeralda pipes up and says, I've just noticed this on her character sheet. Uh, Esmeralda pipes up and says, um, it will take my highest level spell slot, not that she would say that, um, but I do have access to greater invisibility, if that might help. Either maybe Ash or Wondrous or something. I'm, I don't know, just throwing it out there. It, would it do more than just my hidden step? Yes, um, it lasts for up to a minute, um, and as long as I can maintain concentration, you remain invisible, even if you attack or cast spells, uh, which is why it is more effective than the usual invisibility, which ends when you um, attack or cast spells, or I believe your... I don't know much about your personal skills. I can't speak to that, but... <clears throat> Ash, couldn't that help you? If you could run around and bash them one at a time and be invisible while you did it? That definitely would help. Here's weighing the pros and cons. So there is a very high chance that I could just stay out of the way of the fire, right? Because I seem to do a pretty good job of that down there, so I don't want to necessarily waste it on me whenever I typically seem to be able to dodge it. However, me being the only person in here who doesn't really have spells or any sort of long-range uh, prowess, also, I think that it is a good idea, and it would allow me to get in there really quick and hopefully do well, some big damage. And uh, really, it being invisible would give you advantage on every attack roll, automatically it triggering your sneak, sneak attack. attack or yes. It does? Oh, yep. oh, so Because okay. having advantage is one of the other conditions. If you either have an ally within feet or have advantage on the attack, okay. as long as you don't have disadvantage on the attack, then you can sneak attack. So it will be even, it's like it maintains that even if you make multiple attacks. Okay. Um, so the only other thing that I want to throw into the hat here is like if Wondrous were invisible and you got centered, you could hit possibly all of them. And they and then we could definitely take them on all one at a time. But I don't think that, that I think that either way is fine. I just, you know, obviously if I can get in close, I can hopefully do some big enough damage to take them out quick. It's the only way I'm going to be able to do enough damage to make a difference. Uh, again, not having any sort of spells or anything. So, yeah. So, like I said, I'm just she's putting it out there. You you don't even have to use it, but it I just saw that on her sheet. She does have fourth level slots and has greater invisibility. So, I feel like that'd be good. Like, I mean, that would be good for Wondrous in theory. That way she or that way he could get in there and like potentially turn them all at the same time. Wondrous begins to untie the big birdie blanket that he has around his body. Remember that I have hidden step two. I can get 30 feet into the room and be invisible. Maybe we don't have to make the decision uh, from the lovely lady until we decide what is going on. Uh, Cass, you were so badly hurt. We, obviously, we need to rest and, and repair ourselves. I wonder if you should, this time, Cass, take a back seat a little bit in case we need your healing. Quick mm. question: Does anybody anyone know who's in the room? Does anybody know why I put these little shield icons on you guys? Um, <laughs> was like, did someone cast warding bond or something? Or was that? Uh, I might have. Wait, did I cast aid? Oh well, no, well, didn't Maybe you do I that for folks who actually had warm clothes? Well, no. Oh, oh well, I do have it because yeah, I think so. I wrapped a blanket around myself. It was either that or his aid. No, it's because Wanders, Cass, and Ash have it, and I'm pretty sure Esmeralda was the first person you guys gave warm clothes to, so I would have put it on her. I think now everyone has warm clothes except for Wanders, so Wanders theoretically shouldn't have it because all he mm. has is a big blanket. 
I Incidentally, if you're just tuning in and don't yes. remember this, the place they are, generally speaking, is like negative 10 degrees. They're in a very cold, abandoned temple in the mountains. This room with the fire in it, where these other guys were going to stay, is warm enough that people could be there because people were there. But basically everywhere else is freezing, freezing cold. So, Yeah, because I'm, I'm missing a spell slot uh, that uh, or a second level spell slot for aid. Okay. So I think that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. What is it? Well, and Ash through. has extra hit points right now, right? Yeah, Ash um, is. At, it must have been eight because Ash is at fifty-seven out of fifty-two, oh, right, yeah, having raised his thing too. by five. So, okay. okay. So I've that's what those are. Back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I think that lasts for a while, right? That lasts for eight hours. So. Yeah. So, um, okay. Yeah, that'll last us for a while. That's what it is. It's a. I remember. And I have a note over there about what my actual health points are versus what I now have. Okay. okay. Uh, so did you get what I was saying about Kaz is to not let Kaz get killed again? Because <laughs> she's a healer. <laughs> That's fair. And my third backup character is not a healer. Do you think... When we open the door, if we just crack it, they'll all shoot something at it. Because Probably. that would be a good beginning. I mean, I think that it is likely that they might be ready for us, for sure. Well, let's... I'm not, I don't want you to go through it the instant that we open it because if they all shoot at it, then I won't have had a chance. They'll they'll get me whether they can see me or not. So let's open it and close it again and see what happens. Maybe I don't know. Wait, do the doors yeah. open or is it in or outward? Um, you know, I'm not sure if I described that, uh, and I doubt that the adventure tells me. Um, but let me. Look. I think it opened out because I think that. Because Wanders is the one that opened it. And then I pulled it shut. And where I was when I did it was right there. Yeah, it doesn't I say. Um, I would think it opens inward. Like you opened it up, stuck your head in, and then shut it. Like, rip, rip, you know. Okay. So I so think it, it pulls, opens inward. It pulls towards us where we're at now. Um, no, no, I mean, I mean, outward into the room where the skulls are. Okay. That's what I remember. Yeah, because I think you opened the doors, looked in, and then, oh, shit, and closed them. Like, that's probably how I described it. So, okay. Um, we're going to say that, and chat, help me remember. Because <laughs> I will forget if this comes up next week. If we don't make it out of this room this week, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, then we might have to remember that. Also, you guys kind of kicked the doors into this room, but I think these ones go into the other hallway. But anyway. Okay. Yeah. Do, do, what we do, throw something at the door, oh, try to open it that way, or I guess I could just I mean, open someone it. could, like, stand off to the side. Okay. Um, I can do that. Okay, so is the plan to just open the door and look in the hallway... And then shut it immediately. Or do you I think, think I so should I make think myself we're... invisible and try to to dash through? Well, so I think what the initial thing was is we wanted to see if they had an ambush ready, right? Like if if yeah. are they going to attack as soon as they see the doors open? Like with that's the well, only cause they're. But here's for the, the other thing I want to say is, if they didn't have one ready, and you open the door and then close them. They will have they one ready after will, that, won't God, they? It. Right? I mean, you know. All so, right. Let's do that. Uh, so it's like, in terms of your planning, you your best case scenario is they don't have one ready. Your worst case scenario is they do. But if you actually investigate it, they absolutely will. So you have to operate under the assumption that they won't and then patch up your plan if they do. Right? Okay. I want some. I'm, this like, is I'm just, You know, and, and maybe I think Esmeralda it. says that with a few more invectives. <laughs> She swears yeah, a little Wanderers bit more, but that's basically what she says. I know, bonus mom. Go ahead. I'm just. 
Go ahead. Laundress is directly in front of the door and is planning to scooch out as soon as somebody pushes the door open. But he wants to hidden step his way out. And okay. he's going to try to move 30 feet into the room if he survives. Okay. Well, I'm going to move across this north the door before anybody opens that stuff again. Okay. Yeah, uh, I want to make too. it clear that the door is right here. These two squares and, next to Wondrous with the white in the wall, the, that's the door. Well, see, it yep. won't let me be in front of the middle of them, so... Yeah, right. So somebody needs to be right beside me and pop the door open. Well, I guess I could pop yeah. it open myself. Um, well, I could do it. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm, I'm I guess if this is the solid up. plan, then if, if Wondrous is going to hit and step, then I guess uh, Ash would say to Esmeralda, if you wouldn't mind, I guess the visibility can go to me and I can try to get in and do some big damage. Hopefully we won't have to spend too long fighting them. Okay. Okay. The hidden step is a bonus action. Okay. So if I do it as a bonus action, because it's a it's a ability, it's a mm. racial thing from Furbolg, then I can still use I uh, can still do turn undead, right? They can both yes. go on the same move. Correct. So Wondrous is going to race into the room to where he's got all three of them in his sights, and he is going to, as soon as he gets in there, he is going to cast Turn Undead. Okay. And that is a channel. That's one of his channels. Okay, so who's opening the door? Uh, I am. Okay, and are you going to be in front of Ash or over here in the corner? Um, I probably will just be in the corner. Okay. Um, just that way there's enough room for everybody right. to... Well, then, if, if you want Esmeralda to make you invisible, she'll gather up behind Ash and Cass. Okay. And if, if um, Ash is, if, um, I just forgot your character name. I'm so sorry. Our new character. Yeah. Esmeralda? Uh, Peta? Peta. So Pita. if Peta pushes yeah. the door, I'm going in through that way and moving uh, to try to get them all three okay. in my sights. I have a 30-foot radius. And I have um, 30 feet of movement. So I'm okay. going to head to the middle of the thing, hope to get them all, and I'm going to cast right. Turn Undead. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to basically enter... We're going to do like Baldur's Gate turn-based mode. <laughs> so you're not exactly an initiative, but you all only get one set of actions and reactions and movements and stuff before what like we really enter initiative because you're kind of getting the drop here i think that's a relatively fine way to do it um so um everyone kind of keep track of what you have and haven't done so pete is going to open the door wandrus is going to bonus action hidden step and then rush in and do his action what is everyone else doing on this like rush turner is it just going to be purely reactive because if that's the um, case then that's all that's going to happen before initiative but you guys could try to like also do stuff you know i want to leave it up to you all to figure out how you do this like you're basically breaching like swat yeah. style here so like what's the plan um i i really don't want to um i guess like uh, hold a spell and then like cause like one of the turn undead things to like mm -hmm. end up you know ending so I'm just gonna go in and open up the door okay and I'm just waiting for the visibility hit and then once wondrous gets done turning undead the closest okay. one I can get to is where I'll start okay well I'll tell you what um the, her invisibility lasts for a minute so she can like pop she'll just go ahead and pop that on you uh, what's good for invisibility? What's and like a something I'm going to thing? do, Ash, when I do turn on Dad, after I see how many it works on, I'm going to shout a number. And the number that I shout is going to be the number of undead that it worked on. So if I say two, okay. that means there's one that it did not work on. Okay. So wait for that number. Wait for me to shout it. Okay. So okay. she's going to hit you with greater invisibility. Okay, and um, Wondrous is done, hidden step. Okay. I mean, no, done, yeah. <sighs> All right, well. And is Cass out of the line of fire? 
I am. Um, I'm okay. going to rush in basically after Ash and okay. team up on whichever one they go for first. Okay, and then Ka- and then Esmeralda's just going to wait till the end and do kind of probably move up to the door uh, when you guys do. Okay, here it comes, and ready, set, go! So, you burst open, the, or you fling open the door, PETA, and uh, Wandrus, you see that uh, 15 or 20 feet into the room, they are arrayed exactly as you would spe- suspect, sitting by the uh, arrow holes outward. Uh, let me change to a more appropriate soundtrack here. Uh, and... Hey, as quietly as possible, and he got his holy symbol out uh, okay. at the same time he did hidden step. That's where okay. he's moving, and right you've there. You've hidden stepped. Uh, make a stealth check with advantage. Oh, God. This may be my stealth. Advantage saved you. Oh. Okay, 19. 19. Gotcha. 19. Thank you. Okay, so they definitely notice the door opening and look that way, but they don't uh, hear Wandrus. So, uh, Wandrus, go ahead. Uh, you're going to turn undead? Wandrus has his symbol in his hand. He quietly to himself mumbles, get the hints undead, okay. and casts uh, turn undead. Okay, and they have to do a wisdom saving throw, DC 16? A six, DC 16 wisdom okay. throw. I have to look something up real quick. It only matters in one case. Uh, and the number I call is how many it didn't work on. That's what I said, um, didn't it? Okay, it is. Okay, great. So, with Turn Undead, uh, you can see that two of them are turned. Um, what's a fear? Yeah, here we go. Turn Undead works on this one, and this one will just do it proximity to you guys, but not the farthest one. Okay. So, those two are turned, uh, and that is Wondrous' oh. movement and action. Also, you're no longer oh. invisible. Okay, so I holler, so Wondrous would then shout one. Okay. Meaning um, that there's one left. Okay. So, um, Ash. And then once once we get back through Esmeralda, we will roll initiative proper and uh, go from there. Okay, so I have basically my movement here, right? Um, Just... Yeah. Okay. So, get up here 10 so I can see where we're at. And Wondrous has said that there's one that is not... So I do believe that Ash's plan is to dash up to the last one in the hallway and try to get the drop on that since it's the one that's going to start attacking, you know? Okay. So that's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. We're going to bonus action dash. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20. Honestly, 25, 30 to get this right here. Okay. And we're going to make an attack on this skelly boy right here. All right. Let her rip. Sorry, my eyes are really bad. I'm trying to see it. I've just now realized that all of our alert boxes... 23 to hit. Like, in the wrong place. 23 uh, absolutely hits. Yeah. Okay. Damage coming at you. We got 9 slashing damage and 12 sneak attack damage. Okay. Uh, let's see. Minus 9. Minus 12. Okay. Oof, yeah. Nice, solid hit. Uh, as you slash into this skull floating in the air in green flames. Um, that's action movement, bonus action. Anything else from Ash? That's all I got. Okay. My whole my whole kit laid out in front of you, bub. <laughs> all right, Cass, you're up. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, so I'm basically... Like, for this first round, it's going to take... Shoot. It's going to take 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and I'm just going to dash. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 
I mean, I'll have to okay. like burn the rest of my movement to get up there, but I'm or I'll have to, you know, just um actually, you know, I'm gonna throw a javelin at this at that one. Okay. Yeah. Oh wait, oh wait, no, oh wait, no, I use my action to dash. I can't okay. do that. Gotcha. Okay, so you've uh, moved and dashed. Uh, that's everything for Cass. That brings us to Esmeralda. She's going to use 20 feet of movement to pop out from behind cover. Uh, let's see. What is she going to do? Um, She's just going to try to cast a level 1 magic missile on the one next to Ash. Uh, bloop. Uh, for 11 force damage. I don't think this thing has any resistance to force damage. Uh, no, it does not. Okay, so it takes 11. This thing, you guys can tell, is looking pretty rough, actually. Uh, it's like the flame around it is flickering, uh, you know, less and less brightly as it's taking damage. Um... Okay, and Peter had opened the door, so now I'm going to go ahead and call for initiative. Um, and also, uh, totally random, but I think that uh, roll 20 is supposed to try to figure out which character you're rolling initiative for and stuff. So hopefully that thing where you have to remember to have your token clicked is going to be less and less important as time goes on, theoretically. I don't know how well that worked, though. Always just rolled a 21. Two. I also had 21. Oh, Let's go. For it High five. Marilla did. <laughs> what is it? We look at dexterity. Oh, damn. Esmeralda crit. Whoa. Okay. Uh, and then PETA, did I get yours? There it goes. Okay. All right. Um, just got 11. Okay. Uh, well, it's Esmeralda again. Um. Oh, that's only 30 feet into the room. And she's maintaining concentration. But I don't want to keep burning spell slots. Ooh. Um. I guess she's going to run into the room. Uh, and she is going to throw one of her hand axes. So she, like, whips this axe off of her belt uh, and flings it 24 for 8 slash damage. Okay. Well. Oh, wow. Uh, way to go, Esmeralda. Uh, she knocks the thing out of the air and it scatters to the ground. Uh, the greenish light fully goes away. Um, that brings us to Ash. Well, right on down the line, babies. Five, ten, right here. We already got advantage and stuff, so I don't need to do anything past that. So we are going to attack from here. Okay, let her rip. Sixteen to hit. Let's take a look. I believe that hits. Sure does. Okay, this time we've got uh, 11 slashing with... I can't see that number. Is that 6 or 8? 8. 8. 8. Okay. 8 sneak attack. Okay. Solid hit from Ash. Uh, anything you else? No, I would bonus action, disengage, and like move back. But honestly, I'm invisible. <laughs> it's true. Most of the spells that it would use require sight. So I don't think it even can target you unless it does AoE. Um, okay. Wandrous. Okay, Wanderous is no longer invisible right now. That Correct. was for one yep. turn. Wanderous so is... Wanderous quickly yeah, follows buddy. through with a uh, sacred flame at the one that Ash just hit. Okay. And that's a dexterity saving throw of 16. Okay. Oof, this does make the save with a 22. Oh, fooey. Uh, any movement or anything okay. else from Wanderous? Darn it, that was going to be 2d8 damage. Um, let's see. Hmm. 
No, I think Wanderers just stays in place. Okay. Peter, he's you're in up. front of the pretty lady. He's being a gentleman. And she he's probably pretty well hiding her because he's a big guy. All right, Peter, you're up. Okie dokie. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, come into the room and hug the wall there. And I'm going to go ahead and cast uh, Vicious Mockery at um, one that uh, yeah. we've kind of all hit. So uh, what's, wisdom. what's your DC? This? Uh, DC is 15. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. That's double nat 20. <laughs> it, it, oh uh, it, so it, it is not mocked, uh, but what does Peter say? Um, <laughs> or how does Peter mock it? Oh god. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you look better when you're not on fire. <laughs> I haven't been not on fire in 600 years! <laughs> uh, it's sort Easy of the Skeletor. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it does speak common, so it does cackle at you. And... That's great. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. It's like how the default skeleton voice of Skeletor. It's amazing. It's, it's great. I'm sorry. All right. I'm good. Um, Oh god. Okay. Uh he is going to cast blur. So all of a uh, sudden this thing's body like shifts and warbles with the flames. Uh he casts blur on himself. I don't know what a good what's a good effect for blur. I already used that for invisibility. Ooh. Um jeez. We'll just put this. So he's got blur on, and he is going to uh, move. What is his flight speed? Thirty feet. Forty feet. Okay. Uh, he flies up to the other end of the room. Do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, you do. You have disadvantage though, so it cancels out to be even. But you won't be able to sneak attack on this, which I don't think you could because you already. Did sneak attack yeah. anyway. So, am I rolling with disadvantage? Or I just don't have advantage. It's going to be flat because you're invisible would okay. give you advantage, but it right. being blurred would give you disadvantage. So it's just flat. Twenty-two. Yes. <laughs> Hits. Okay. I just I just want to be very clear. It's like it doesn't give me disadvantage. It just means I don't get my advantage basically. But I, right. I see we're right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. They just cancel out. Okay. Nine slashing for that. Okay. I guess he has to make a concentration check on blur now. Gotta be the 10. He does. Okay. Uh, that brings us to this one, which has to flee and dash as far away as it can go. Come on, buddy. I, mean, I think it's worth mentioning that technically, I think that's another attack of opportunity from. We can't do that yes. right now, buddy. But I don't know if that's yeah. like a one we want to take. Sure. Yeah, it's up to you guys. Mm. Uh, Cass, you would get an attack of opportunity on the one next to you. Uh, but if you hit it, it will stop being turned. So it's up to you guys. Wait, so what happened to that one? Oh, it the moved. one next to you ran away, but it has turned undead on it. So if you hit it, that will stop and it will start fighting you. Uh. Um, and the other one hasn't died yet, but... Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Based on I don't the, wanna, you know... I don't want to wake it up. Yeah, the other one Wait, didn't based take on a ton... What now? Well, the other one didn't take a ton more damage than what you've dished out, the one that's already dead. So it's up to you guys if you want to wait or hit it fully up to you guys so i, I don't want to risk like waking okay. it up okay well then it is Cass's actual turn now as well sick totally stoked they just keep moving away from me damn it 5 10 15 20 Actually, I'm move up here and get online with Ash. Okay. And then I'm going to throw a javelin at this guy. Okay. 
Go ahead. Uh, how far is it from you? No, oh, well, not one. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that does not hit. Yep. Uh, Esmeralda. Yes, she's just going to move in. She's already thrown one hand axe. I guess she's going to throw her other hand axe, but she's running out of hand axes here. Uh, that's Oof. only a nine. It mm -hmm. does not hit. So her axe sort of clatters uh, to the stone. Uh, brings us to Ash. All right, baby. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And let's do it again. It has right. uh, the blur still yet, yes? It does, yes. Okay. Is it 22 to hit? Oh, 22, 22, baby. I don't, yeah, good lord. Okay, so we got eight slashing on that one. Okay, that's eight slashing damage. I don't have sneak attack. That one was don't 13. Have the sneak attack. <laughs> it is barely <sighs> hanging on. Wandress, you're up. Okay. Wandress is going to um, move just basically so he can get a good shot past Ash. Okay. And he is going to cast a uh, guiding bolt at the guy. Hoping that 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 does it. And I, I hesitate uh, to give you too much tactical oh, advice. That wait, is going to be gross good. overkill for this guy. He's he's hanging on by a thread, and guiding bolt is like four d six. Well, but I didn't hit him the other time. Okay, yeah. thank you for that advice. I mean, if you I drop that it. on the other one, it would make sense. But it's just like he has. I'll just tell you, he has like four hit points right now, and you'd be dropping so some huge light. damage. Okay, it's like well, it's not Wanderous a good use of the spell slot. The only thing is, if the guy gets off a firebolt, we're all in major trouble. Okay, so Wanderous is going to um, hit him again with Sacred Flame. Okay. And that's a dexterity saving it throw fails. of DC 16, or take 2d8 radiant he damage. He fails. He actually hey. fails. Right. 2d8, so... Don't be too nat. Well, wait a minute. I'm trying to get there. Don't be too nat ones, okay? That'd be rough. <laughs> 13. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Still overkill. Oh, I also forgot to make him roll his concentration check, but I don't think it matters. He's dead. <laughs> we'll just... It's fine. Um, it's fine. Okay. Uh, anything else from Wondrous? Um... No, not at this point, because the other guy is still... It, it, there's nobody... It, it, no. Okay. Wanderers is just holding his position. All right, Peter. Okay. Um, This is... 60... Far... Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just cast uh, Distant Whispers on the okay. remaining skull. Um, So... This is going to be a wisdom saving throw, uh, DC 15. Okay, he um, does make the save, seven. unfortunately. Okay. Gotcha, so that is going to be uh, for psychic damage then. Okay. All right, for psychic damage, he is no longer turned. And then it is his turn. Ah, uh, jeez, what should he do in this situation? Okay, um, he is going to cast Flaming Sphere. Uh, uh, directly in front, of, actually he's gonna drop it here. Um, and I don't believe it does anything when it initially comes into existence. Let's see. Um, as a bonus action, you can move the sphere. Okay. Um, well, he can't see Ash. So he is going to attempt to ram the sphere into Esmeralda, who will have to make a save using his bonus action. She has to make a DC something or other. It's a dexterity save. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, his spell save DC is 13. She makes the save. So she takes, I think, half damage. I have to look at him. Or, uh... 
against the sphere's damage. Yeah, yes. Half damage. Okay, so she takes half of 2d6. Sorry, guys. Uh, which is going to be four points of damage. She does have to make a concentration check on the invisibility. Makes the save. Um, there's nowhere for this thing to run. I think it's just going to stay where it is. Cass, you're up. <clears throat> Alrighty, I'm going to... This will take all of my movement to get up here. And then Mace of Disruption. Okay. Oh, this thing's about to have a bad day. Oh my god, alright. Two nat oh. ones in a row, I'm burning inspiration. Okay. Oh, feels bad. <laughs> oh, oh god. Yikes. Brother. Brutal. I would have it's died if that would have been another one. <laughs> this thing has 13 AC. Oh, oh no. 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 Oh, no. Esmeralda is going to scooch in here. Oh, also, Cass, uh, you ended your turn within five feet of the flaming sphere. Ah, oh, sick. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Come on. Now we need an at 20. 12. What? Okay, the DC for this guy, I believe, is 13. <laughs> Of course oh, it is. Yeah, oh, no. it is. one of those days, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, no. The dice are the dice are a cruel <laughs> mistress. Uh, you um, take eight points of fire oof. damage. Oof. Yeah, that's fine. And then so I'm a tank. Esmeralda is going to rush in here. We'll just. Oh, no, actually, I don't want to do that. We'll just. You also have inspiration back. Him. Uh, thank you. Okay, inspiration back. Fine souls. All right, uh, Esmeralda is going to make some attacks. Is yes. this piercing damage? Okay. So she gets two piercing, two rapier attacks and one short sword attack. Yes. Okay. 18 hits, Thank 14 you. hits, 23 hits. Yes, for 12, yes, yes. 8, and 6 points of piercing damage. However, this thing has resistance to piercing damage, so all that damage is halved. So 12 is going to be only 6 be damage for... Three, but still, three attacks is not bad. No. Uh, Ash, you're up. Okay, well, I'm scooting right past Cass and getting in this corner, away from that ball of death. And uh, keep it rolling, baby. Now, this one does not have, doesn't impose disadvantage, right? Correct, it does not cast. It casts Flaming Sphere instead of Blur. Also, it needs to make concentration checks. Hang on. Okay, uh, I got an 18. It's got to make three for each of those hits all of which pass you hit him so go ahead and roll damage sneak attack yeah. applause sneak right? attack yep, applies. eight and six i think okay so that's what 14. gotta make another concentration <laughs> which he passes okay <laughs> whoo brings us to wondrous okay wondrous moves up just to the point where he um has shot at the guy and how bad is he looking he made a judgment call last time to pretty do bad sacred. about not a, like a little better than the last one but not in great shape okay i think that wanderers is going for another sacred flame okay. dc 16 or two d8s okay here it comes it does make the save this time oh booey uh pita or anything else from Wanderers? I don't think Wanderers has anything else, really. All right, Peter. He only gets one. Okie dokie. Um, so uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and use my bonus action to cast um, Healing Word on okay. Cass. So let's roll that. It's five points of healing to you, Cass. Thank you, thank you. And for my action, um, da, 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 da. Uh, can I use, use vicious mockery? Yes. Okay. You yeah, I, I would go ahead and do that then. Um, DC fifteen uh, with uh, three psychic gifts. Makes the save again. Uh, of course it does. That's brutal. <laughs> Okay. Um, little guy. 
<laughs> All right. Well, he's going to try to ram the flaming sphere into Esmeralda again because she did the most damage last round. So she's got to make a DC 13 deck save. Which oh. she fails. No, can I use Sentinel there? Um, no, that's attack? his bonus action. Oh. So he's like rolling the sphere in. Uh, she takes okay. six points of fire damage. She has to make a concentration check on greater invisibility. Which she makes. Yep. She and makes then it. he has an action left. Uh, oh, he has shield, which he could have been using this whole time. Oh, well. Monsters are complicated. Uh, he is just going to dump a magic missile, I guess, directly into Esmeralda. I, I just don't know does what he other... Get, is that technically a ranged attack? And does he get disadvantage um, with that? Or magic no, missile is an auto that. hit. So okay, it just, gotcha. It just, I was just curious. It just does what it do. I was just curious. Yep. Um, but I can use Sentinel there, right? I, uh, let's look at the wording on Sentinel. Uh, let's see. Creatures provoke opportunity to... Okay, so when a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against a target other than you, mm -hmm. and that target doesn't have this feat, you can use your reaction on so, the melee. What? I mean, they made an attack. He didn't. I believe an attack requires an attack roll, and magic missile is just auto damage, so I don't actually think it applies. Uh, um, oof. However, it is your turn. Okay, well, Mace of Disruption. Okay. That seems odd to me because Magic Mickle Missile, when we take our turn and do that, is always considered an attack. Well, it's it's, an, it's a spell and it's an action. I got that a hit. Hits. It's a spell and it's an action, but I believe as, as far as D&D &D terminology goes, for it to be an attack, it requires an attack roll, which is either a melee attack roll, a melee weapon attack, ranged weapon attack, melee spell attack, or ranged spell attack, none of which happens when you do Magic Missile. Uh, um, 16 damage total. Does that kill it? Yeah, sure does. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, so you step up and just bat this thing out of the air, and it just like, bam, slams into the wall, and then falls to the ground. You have solved my flaming skull puzzle. Thank goodness. Puzzle. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Accurate. Really had to use our brains on that one. You know? big, big brain time. <laughs> yeah, it took okay. us two weeks to figure this plan out. And we so like you, stand, getting it going. you stand in the hallway. Oh, God. Um, and you can see these arrow slits in the wall that reveal the floor down below. Uh, you can see there are a couple of doors here uh, in the hallway uh, on the side. Uh, there's one here, one here, and one right next to Peta, as well as a large double door here at the other end. Um, I would like, I think, Ash, I think you're the only person that can make this check. Uh, I need either a religion or arcana check. This is going to be DC 20. Okay, so I'm going to do um, religion, I guess. For 11. 11, okay. That's it. <laughs> well, that sucks. Yeah, uh, but this would have required study, and I think you're the only person who had a chance to know what that information is. Um, but you don't, so. Okay. Um, with that, what would you all like to do? Well, well Wondrous is going to immediately peer out of that one hole right there where uh -huh. he is, okay? And see if he gets any shot of anything downstairs that he didn't see from where he was before. Does Wanders have dark vision? I think so. Let me look and see. Maybe not. I don't know. It will be on like the left side of your character sheet, I think. Probably. Language rep weapon. No, I don't 
I don't. Or maybe see no, it. it would be on the right side of your character sheet in the big box with all mm -hmm. of your like druid and yeah. racial oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh no, can't dampen elements. No. no, he does not. Okay. So he doesn't uh, so see So no, anything. you can see about ten feet down where, or however many feet. I think you're like holding a torch or something, maybe. However far the light you are personally holding extends is as far as you can see, but it doesn't reveal anything else outside of uh, oops outside of what you had already seen before. I didn't mean to put that in chat, sorry. Well, Wanders is probably racing back for the blanket. Okay. So he's going to go get the blanket sure. and gird up again, because he's the one that's in the minus 10 degrees. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to check these side doors. Okay. Yeah, um, I'd probably open the door next to me. Okay, so Omega, I'm sorry, PETA opens the door next to PETA. Uh, do you open multiples of these doors at once, or are you just going to go one at a time? What's the uh, plan? Um... I'm good either way. Um, we can open them at the same time if we wanted to. But... Yeah, I can check this one here. Okay. okay. All right, you guys open the doors. Um, I can go okay. down and check this one. Okay, we'll open all the doors. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay, uh, it's gonna, I'm going to read these sake. bottom to top just for my okay. own sake here. Um, Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, uh, Peta, the door that you open, you see uh, stone blocks resembling tables sort of uh, sitting in the middle of the room, but they are covered in dust. Um, you can see in the stone walls around the room, there are these sort of like niches, little niches or whatever you might want to call them, uh, filled with like dusty bottles um, by the hundreds. Uh, and you can see cobwebs hanging from wooden ladders that lean around the walls. It's like a live, it's like, you know, shelves, like a library room, except carved out of the stone. And instead of books, it's just oh, like okay. bottles and bottles and bottles. Okay. Um, next, Cass, you see a 20 foot long, 10 foot high hallway uh, of, of bare stone with an amber door at the end. And I think all of the doors so far in this place have been amber. Um, and then Ash, you see uh, that dominating this room is a 12 foot tall model of a dark castle with high walls and tall spires. Behind it, tucked huh. in a corner, are some ruined furnishings and a wooden chest. Listen, I'm going in my room. I don't know if it's y'all, but <laughs> I want to see what this is. Yeah, I'd, I'd yeah. probably step in. Okay. Wait, I think is I would hold going up. going into their individual rooms? I think I would hold up since mine opens up mm. into like a hallway to another room. I, like, I, like I, I wouldn't okay. want to get separated from the group. Gotcha. Well, I think Esmeralda will come down. Oh, also, I forgot to mention this before. There's a dead body over here in the corner of this big hallway that has been clearly scorched to death. I for, I just noticed it on the map when I sent Esmeralda over there. I forgot to mention it before. Um, also, I know it hasn't necessarily been 10 minutes, but in the course of exploring this room, greater visibility will fade. So we'll go ahead and yeah, makes sense. pop that off. Okay. Well, Wanderous went and came back, so I think he would kind of be looking to see what um, Peter looked at just because okay. he would have found him next. Gotcha. Okay, well then Esmeralda will stay up here with Ash. She just doesn't want either anyone to get too separated. Uh, okay, so um, why don't we have you guys roll off to see which, between Peta and Ash, which room we do fast. Well, but shouldn't somebody investigate the body? Well, if you want to investigate body. the body, you can go for it. But Peta and Ash said they went in those That's rooms. That's what I so. thought that Esmeralda was doing. No, Esmeralda was going to go stand by Peta and make sure he was okay because he thought you, she, you were up there, but if you okay. went and got the thing, then then she went up there to make sure Ash was okay, basically. Okay, well, Wanderous rolled in that one, so I don't okay. think he likes to look well, at burned bodies. All right, so <laughs> we'll do we'll do Wanderous last. Uh, so VP, nope, Ash. Ash is a character, not a real human. Ash is first. Um, Ash, yeah, so you see this uh, room with this big 12-foot-tall model. So this, this, it's like a model castle. It's like a giant Barbie playhouse, but it's 12 feet tall, right? So, like, the walls of this thing are twice as tall as a anyone here, basically, except for Wanderers, you know, maybe could reach the top of it. But um, go ahead and um, 
Well, yeah, so uh, so there's the dark castle, uh, and then there's some ruined furnishings and a wooden chest in the room. So what are you looking at? Well, you know, first things first, I kind of want to see what's in the chest. Okay. I don't know where that's at. Um, I think it's this little thing right here. It's I can little... vaguely see that, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, extremely... The detail is not rep fully representative, but we'll say that that's what it is. Okay. Um, yeah, so you open the chest. Uh, you find an old map case. Um, but it, you can see that the maps inside of it, like where, you know... I, and I think as like a, a monster hunter type, you've studied maps of like mansions and haunted houses and stuff. Uh, you, so that you recognize what that is, but there are no maps in it. Uh, mm -hmm. But do go ahead and give me <clears throat> a perception check, please. See, that's what I like to hear out there. 23. Well, that's what we like to hear. Right? As you are <laughs> looking around in this uh, chest, you discover that the chest has a false bottom. Ooh, baby. Which you pull up to reveal... Stand by. Moment, please. Uh, to reveal a book. It is a leather-bound book with sort of a, like, reddish uh, leather. You can see a, um, a marking on the front of the book. It appears to be a kind of, like, bearded face. Uh, with like re a really cur curly beard and a sort of like artistic circular relief, um, and it has like a gem uh, embedded in the forehead. Not like an actual gem, but the the relief is of a face that has a gem, but the gem is also leather. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like a picture of a person with a gem in their head, but like doesn't actually it's not actually a gem. Um, and it is this like red bound book. Okay, we're taking that. We're gonna pocket that. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, well, before I put it in my pocket, can I, it, does it just like open? I'm assuming yeah, it's not like Yeah, you open or... and uh, you can begin to read it. Uh, it's really quite strange. It has a series of like thought exercises. Um, designed to help someone with their, like, intuition or insight. Uh, if you spend an hour, like, studying it, kind of like attuning to it, sort of, it doesn't actually require attunement, but if you spend an hour with the magic item, you can identify it and find out exactly what it actually is, but... Well, we'll save that for a rest. Let's go ahead and put that in the bag for now and then we're gonna move on to investigating this yeah but somebody put that I, I, somebody put that on your inventory do not forget to I look did. at that it is crazy beard gym crazy book good treasure you this. just found yeah bearded gym book okay let me write yeah. that on what this is edit uh I don't think Ash is going to sit down in the middle of the floor and this is like book. well now it's just reading time okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me actually put this. Bearded gem. And while since I've got to use my library card, it seems there like a go. good time to get it. All some. right. <laughs> that way, when you say I found the bearded gem book, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I, yeah, will, I will know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, okay, so that is Ash. Uh, I'll just tell you there's nothing else of interest in this room. Uh, there oh. is a model of what is obviously Castle Ravenloft, but, like, it's, uh, you know... It's not like pieces that you can pull apart and see the inside of. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's the castle. And there's um, not going to be any strategic advantage to studying it at all? I mean, not really. You get the general okay. sense of the thing. You can see here there's like a bridge over a chasm. There's like a guardhouse, a big wall all the way around the thing. You can see that the back of the castle kind of goes right up to a cliff where this other back wall is. You can see that the main body of the castle is in the center. There are a couple of different spires on it. You can see that the inner courtyard is divided into like a front courtyard and then two different back courtyards that have their own little smaller walls blocking them off. So you get like a rough sense of the 
overall layout of the place. Um, you notice that there's two big spires in the front uh, on either side of like the little building in there. And then there's like one big spire on as you're looking at it, what would be the kind of bottom side of it. This thing here is like probably the tallest tower. Maybe I'm not actually hundred percent sure about that though. Right. But so, nothing that's going to give me any sort of inside past. Oh, this is a castle. Yeah, it's is. a castle. I mean, you could, you could, if you really studied it, you could get a rough layout of like, okay, there's, here's where the towers are that might orient yeah. you if you were inside the place, but it would be kind of hard to keep your bearing anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Pita. Okay. So, I, I, so is there like anything on the tables at all? Is it just like dust covered? Uh, the table is just covered in dust. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check out the wall in the south um, and see if there's anything uh, of note that I see. Okay. Um, let me see. Would that be investigation or perception? Um, perception, I guess, unless you're looking for something specific. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, do perception. That is a 16. 16. Um, yeah, so the bottles contain um, just like dried up remains of what you recognize to have probably been potions, but they're like so old that they uh, probably have lost their magic efficacy. Um, the ladders you think were once used to reach higher niches, uh, but they look old and rotted and probably can't really support much weight gotcha okay good to know Gwanders is just gonna walk around the room and um I think he's curiously gonna oh didn't you say there were books in there um no it, it there no. are bottles in niches it's, it's like bottles, a library so, okay. of books but bottles said uh also you only rolled a what was that a nat one in that investigation but it actually didn't really require much investigation uh the charred corpse yeah um has a staff with it staff yes like a like a quarter staff looking thing I think, you know, Wanders should probably take it. Okay. Um, yeah, you find the staff. Um, it is, it is strange. It has like a kind of leather handle in the middle, uh, but the whole staff basically seems like it's made of ice. Ice that did Ice. not thaw? Yes. Wanders would find that very interesting. He's probably going to show it to Peter and say, look what I found. It was with that charred corpse, but it's ice and the fire didn't burn it, didn't melt it. Um... Okay, anything else from PETA or Ash or Cass looking in these rooms? I mean, I'm just going to say, hey, this leads to another room and I don't want to go alone. What about the doors at the end of the hall? And how long do we want to be in here? Well, I got my blanket back. Never mind. I'm okay. Um, so if I, you know, could propose something, I think that every door we've run into in this place has been amber. So I think that we're going to just have to check them as we come up yeah. to them. And leaving any of them shut is a chance of us leaving behind what we're here for. So Yeah, that's true. I say we stick to this side and we just check every door we come across as we go around. Yeah. Or, uh, or yeah. risk pass again, risk passing up what we even came here for. So I say we check this hallway next. Okay. Full clear, baby. Choo choo. Cass, <laughs> you've had it had it pretty tough again. How are you? And how are you, lovely lady? On a scale of one to eighty-two, I'm about a fucking sixty-two. 
<laughs> I mean, I feel pretty good. Like, I mean, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I think we just need to keep going. I mean, I can heal myself if I need to, but I'm fine right now. Huh. I'm almost this room. So I'm stuck. I got stuck in the door. <laughs> if you push huh. push your character into the walls, you can't get out. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> So we're going to go check out <laughs> okay. uh, the room at the end of my door first. I think that that's uh, our best bet. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then we can go to the one at the end of the hallway. Okay, I'm going to walk up, walk down the hall to this next door. Okay. Open the door. Yep. Okay. Everybody get in here first. Or, hold on. Come on, guys. Oh, no, we're good. <laughs> yeah, you said that when you walked down the stairs, too, Chief. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You open the door to find a stairway Stairs. leading down. Uh, let me read the description here. Yeah. Um, you see a like a 10 foot wide stairway um, that goes about 10 feet down to a landing and then turns, makes a right angle to the right and go or to the left and goes another uh, goes down again. Uh, you can see thick dust covering these stairs. They appear not to have been used in a very long time. Okay, we also, don't think that this... You're far enough away from the other room that you can no longer hear the sound of wind howling outside. Do we think that this just wraps around and it dumps us back in to the big statue room, or do we feel like... Do we get a pretty good sense this leads us on down? Well, if you remember, I think in the big statue room at the bottom of the stairs, there so was sorry. like a hallway to the left that was kind of a wider hallway. Um, oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah, if this led back down to that. that. Like, yeah. Um, so, but you're kind of over from the, like, if you think about this place geographically, right? The, uh... The wall here at the edge is directly above where that hallway started, but you're like 30 feet back from that. So, you know, it either comes out to a little hallway that leads out to the big room, or maybe it goes into another room or another hallway or something. It probably connects up to that other way you saw, but there may be other stuff there. Um, but it is a whole other floor to go mess with, so. I feel like we should do the two doors at the end of this hall. They were amber also, correct? Yeah, yes. I kind of think so. Before we change floors. Yeah, yeah dude, I agree with that. The second floor first. I, I totally respect that. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, I think Wanderous heads for the doors at the end of the hall. Yep. Oh. I looked at the castle on the way by. And that, do you think, is the castle where um, Onyx is? I believe so. I mean, I think you guys have maybe seen Castle Ravenloft in the distance over, you know, when you like came into town into Barovia or when you went around the hills, it's like looming off in the distance, looking all decrepit. Oh. Uh, and I think I you would recognize that's probably what it is. I in at it because this is certainly closer, but that's all just a peek. Okay, okay. who wants to do the honors of open this one? Um, I, I can. Okay. Uh, she's going to actually get, like, over here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Why she's like, you need backup, but, thing, but also yeah. not to be in the line of sight. You know, it's a clever move. It's tactical. <laughs> she's a tactical thinker. Let's be teachable. Fair, fair enough. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the door. Okay, you open the door. Uh, you see, actually, that there are lit torches in this room, illuminating a dining table in the center of the room. Covering the table is a magnificent feast that fills the oh hall God. with the rich smells of cooked meat, sweet vegetables, piping hot gravy, and potent wine. Uh, the ceiling here is about 20 feet high. There are some, another set of amber doors over here. What do you see, Peter? Uh, looks like another torchlight room. Um, I 
I see it looks like a sort of formal dining table, but I, I, I don't know. It just seems strange that there's another lit room here. It seems very strange. I smell good food. Given the nature of this place, I don't trust it. I, I, I honestly don't either. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just step into the room and go to one of the uh, uh, heads of the table. Okay. Yeah, you step into the room. Uh, you walk up to the table. You see... Uh, I can- be you know, careful. Be very careful. Stuff all I don't think you should touch anything. Uh, I'm going to go in and uh, make a uh, perception check to see if I notice anything like just out of the ordinary on the table. But uh, Let's see. Going to roll that. That is a natural one. I just see a very... Yeah. Do you see what I've described? <laughs> Dope. Uh, okay. Do an investigation or... <laughs> uh, sure. Are you touching anything? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> when you ask a lot like that, it makes me second guess my whole life. <laughs> well, and Wondrous did just say, don't me. touch anything. Okay. I just want to investigate without touching it. Actually. Okay. Make, Daddy Wonder said I shouldn't touch anything. Make so an I'll investigation do. check. Uh, very scared. What? <laughs> oh my god, I love that one. Oh, oh no! My god. Listen, I'm going to burn it. <laughs> oh, burning it? Yeah, I got to. All right, let her rip. You nat once in a row? I don't think so. <laughs> Try that again. 26. 26. You. As you carefully investigate the objects on the table, Ooh. you detect that it is an illusion. And okay. once you realize the illusion, it sort of fades and takes on sort of like a ghostly image uh, sort of how illusions always do once you've seen through them. Someone gave you an inspiration back. Um, and everything on the table is an illusion, except uh, amid the feast in the middle of the table, table, which you can now detect to be real, is a green copper ewer embossed like a, a, ewer, like a pitcher, uh, embossed with images of dancing bear, elk, and wolves. Also, the table and chairs are real. Uh, the torches are not real. Oh. Uh, as well. So, uh, once you detect them, the light in the room dissipates. I don't know if that... Does it happen for the rest of us when he detects it, or do we still um, see... No. He would have to tell... Well, I mean, if, it depends on if Ash tells everyone, and then once it's been explained to you, then then Yes. I think that Ash, as they are breaching to grab the uh, pitcher, would be like, "Look very close. It, it is an illusion. This this isn't actually here." As it starts to flicker, Wanders would call would uh, do light again if he needed to. I'm not exactly sure where we are on that. He had caught he had cast it on a quarter. Staff. I mean, I think we'll just assume that whatever. You know, until you tell me otherwise, whoever currently has light on their character, which is on your tokens, still has whatever light it was. Um. So is Ash reaching for the you the viewer? The yeah. Okay. It's the only real thing in here besides the table. So like, I yes, I I knew that table was an illusion. <laughs> Course. You okay. along. I don't see any servants around here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> making all this delicious food. So. I'm sorry, it doesn't smell good anymore. Okay, so what's happening now? I just wanted to pick up the uh, the pitcher. Beautiful. Uh, I would like everyone to please roll initiative as oh, 
<laughs> as so a bunch of ghostly creatures come into being around the table and the feast. Um, where is this? You know, this one's on me, guys. 14. Very sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Touch nothing but the lamp. <laughs> Not okay. everyone is like, hey, don't touch anything. I'm like, bet. I'm going to pick <laughs> it up. All right, let me just put these guys in places that make sense for them to be in. Oh. Uh, there's like one. Sorry, there's one like on top of you. We'll put it over here. Oh, okay. Lord. Um, do ghosts qualify as undead? Sure do. Hey! Did I? Hang on. Real quick. Did I? No. I mean, yes. listen. Okay. All I want to say is, is I did say full clear, okay? And defeating the monsters constitutes in a full okay, clear run, on. okay? I just and want to make sure that I have the blame right. anybody okay. for the full clear yes. mentality. Okay. Hang it on. definitely extends Sorry, to pixel. Guys, I'm gonna same. I want to actually use these versions of this monster. Okay, one, two, three, four. Rich, she have it. Okay. Sorry, everyone. It's gonna take me a minute to get all these initiatives rolled. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Listen, we have a foolproof plan. I say we stick to the plan. <laughs> okay. Let's see. And then I need... Don't need no, you. I do need you. Plan automatically fail if you use the same plan twice. I mean, only one way to find out. <laughs> okay. Um, I am All not right. on the initiative tracker. Okay. Uh, Just a heads up. <laughs> okay. And what did you roll? Uh, I have not rolled yet. I just okay. wanted to gotcha. double check. But um, let's see well, that. I'm not on there. Uh, eleven. Okay. All okay. right. Perfect. So. Um, I don't think anyone's necessarily surprised by this, because I think you guys are expecting nonsense to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. So that brings us to Wandrus. Wandrus was in the process of walking into the room, I'm sure, as the whole thing is getting um, discussed. And as far as he, as soon as he gets in and sees what's happening, he is again going to try to cast Undead. Turn Undead? For his okay. second ch channel divinity of the okay, day. Okay, let's see. Da, da, da. Okay, uh, I gotta DC make 16. seven. Okay, we're gonna go clockwise, starting with the one closest to Ash. DC 16, fail. Pass. Fail. Uh, fail, pass, fail, pass. Fail, fail, fail. Yeah, okay. that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Okay, so Wanderers is turned undead. And I think, uh, let's see now, that that's my action? Yes. And can I do a bonus action after my action? You can, I want to do yes. Okay, I'm going to do the hidden step thing and get out of the doorway. Can you do hidden over. step more than once in a day? I, might, I think oh. that's a long rest recharge. Oh, okay. Didn't. Uh, let's take a look. Sure. Okay, it's short or long rest, Shorter. and okay. we have it. You have it. Okay, well, Wanderers is still just going to move over okay. to uh, in front of the other door, I think. Okay. All right, you move over to in front of the other door. Um... That way they'll this they one won't try to is run away. going yeah. to run away uh it's gonna have to da hang on it's gonna have to dash let me look at their uh 50 feet whoo these are fast okay so this thing is gonna go a hundred feet down the hallway 
<laughs> Bye. Okay. Uh, unless somebody wants to take an attack of opportunity, but I doubt that you do. Nope. Uh, this one is going to do the same exact thing. This one is also going to do the same exact thing. <laughs> All the ones that were high in initiative got turned. See? Lucky you. you. Boom. Okay. Uh, brings us to Cass. How many? So now, they're just two? Uh, two of them passed their save. All the others failed. So oh, this okay. one here okay. and this one at the end of the table passed. <clears throat> Uh, the other two with the scared face. Uh, we failed. don't have their initiative yet, right? I'm going for this one. Okay, the one, the the first, the closest one that's not scared. Yep. Okay. Uh, make your and attack roll. Mace of disruption. Okay. Sixteen. I was about to say. I swear to God, that's another nat one. Sixteen hits. Okay. We're looking at uh, fifteen points of damage total. Brutal. And I'm going to use my extra attack. Okay. And I'm going to do it again. Okay. 23. Hits. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to roll that. I was just trying to see what the Mesa Detroit has. Okay. Uh, so 11 more points. Yep. 11 more. Uh, poof. She gone. Anything else from Cass? Um. Oh, you said it's about to be dead. No, it's or gone. It? That one. Oh, yeah, okay. you slam into that <laughs> one with your mace, and the mace of disruption. This like blinding, radiant white light, sort of, and it just like burns it up in this white fire, uh, and the ghostly creature is gone. Okay. Um. Can't really think of anything else I'm going to do, so I'm good. So they apparently have less than 26 hit points. <laughs> Whatever that is. Okay, uh, that brings us to this, which is immediately going to fly over to Ash, holding the uh, thing, and uh, going to attack. Actually, as a bonus action, it is going to turn invisible... Oh, hate that. Uh, and it is going to... Oh, this is fun. Ash, you feel this, like, freezing cold feeling. Um, you take... Don't mess with that. Four points of necrotic damage. And then uh, huh? this thing materializes across from you and attacks you with it just reaches out its ghostly hand uh, to try to grab you that's a 23 to hit I mean obviously that is. <laughs> okay uh, you take 6 more points of necrotic damage I'm going to just take it too because I do have what I was going to say and I don't Evasion? know if this applies here. I haven't, well, no, because that's oh, only for AOE dodge, stuff, right? right? Uncanny dodge. Honestly, it's not that huge a hit. I'm just going to... Okay. Uh, oh, I, I also can... need a DC 12 constitution saving throw. Okay. I should also put on some... That 20. It's 22. Okay. Whatever the effect is does not take place. Okay. Uh, that is the Spectre Peta. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, use a Sun Sword because that's what I've been using as a light source. Um, mm. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make an attack against it. Yeah. Uh, Two-handed. Okay. Let's oh. do that. Roll... So that's a 24 to hit. Um, Hits. That is uh, six radiant damage. Okay. And I'm going to roll again. Uh, same thing. Okay. Um, let's see. Roll that. Okay, that's a 14 to hit. 14 hits. Okay. And that is uh, five, five radiance. Okay. All right. And I th think I'm going to do that and then end my turn. 
Okay. Now this one is going to dash as well. Uh, fleeing from Turn Undead. Um, real quick, I'm just going to... I, I want to put the uh, text of Turn Undead and just because I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. Uh, Channel Divinity Turn Undead. What does that actually say? As an action, present your holy symbol. It's a wisdom saving throw. Turn for one minute or until it takes any damage. Okay, so... I expect this won't be relevant. Uh, but... Okay. From Wandress's turn, it was at 10 when you cast it. There we go. All right. So when you hit it next time, it'll be nine more turns. Um, okay. Uh, that is Ash. You are up next. There's one more creature in the room with you. And then a whole host of them have f flown well, there's one far more. away. There's another oh, one. Oh, and then there's the, the one right across yeah. from you. Yeah, I'm a dummy. Sorry. That's okay. So um, I think Ash would know this by now, but I just want to double check. Does my uh, blood blade affect these creatures because it's magic? Uh, it is magic. So, so it unless, touch them. so yeah, unless they are, I mean, I think you fought enough types of these kinds of things before. Yeah, yeah it, they don't have resistance to magical attacks. Just certain, they have n immunities to certain things. I mean, make a make a free religion or arcana check if you want. Okay, well, so I, I um, figure that like normal weapons don't hit them because they're ghosts, right? Well, they probably just have. I mean, most of the time you've been familiar with this. It's mostly mostly resistance. Okay. All right. It's a 14, 14. Yeah, on a 14 and how many times you fought stuff like this in this campaign, um, it probably is immune to like necrotic and poison damage. You can't poison a dead thing and it's already dead. What's sure. necrotic going to do? Often it'll have yeah. resistances to certain types of damage like fire and cold. Like what are you going to freeze it? Like, you know. Yeah, um, sure. They don't ever have resistance to radiant and they're often resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from mundane or non-magical attacks, but right. uh, because your thing counts as magical, uh, it should be fine. Okay, that's... I, th I thought so. I figured yeah. Ash would know. I wasn't 100% sure yeah. that's where I was at. Sure. Okay, that's 25 to hit. Uh, 25 hits. This thing's stupid. <laughs> it's so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> um, do, I do get sneak attack because it is in range, right? Okay, uh, so yeah. we're looking at 13 plus 6. She gone. Okay. I'll take okay. it. Anything else from Ash? Um, no. Okay. Uh, Esmeralda is going to scooch right in here. Figure that we're taking on the last one we can see. She's going to make two attacks with her magical rapier. And one attack with one of her... No, uh... Oh, yeah, two attacks with her magic rapier and one attack with her magic hand axe. Um, God, there's, okay, 11, oh, my God, 11 hits. <laughs> 11 hits. This thing does Listen, not have they much don't AC. have armor, Bob. We may um, there's seven of them, so if they mobbed you all up at once, it was nasty, but he scared half so, of them away, so. All those hit for 16 9, 18. Plus 9, 25. Yeah, there's no way. Uh, let's. I'll just do this one at a time. Minus uh, seven, minus nine, minus nine. Yeah, she gone. Uh, so Esmeralda <laughs> just whoosh whoosh whoosh. Uh, one more is gone. Wanders, you're up. Wanders is looking around, saying, "What do we do now? Go after them? We have to, don't we?" I mean, they'll probably come back after the minutes up. Hi. If we can I catch think, them, they're pretty quick. I think... Do... Do we... So do I go, Do I dash? Do I go after them? What do I do? Well, I think you would have noticed from how quickly they're going that they are way, way, way faster than you. We... Yeah. So you can probably get one shot at one of the ones you can currently see. But if you keep dashing, they're just going to keep outpacing you, right? So yeah, it's like... Well, let me ask like this, because yeah. Wanderous was looking at what happened. Did they go literally through the door or through a wall? I mean, or did... Did, did you they... guys shut any of those doors behind you? 
Uh, probably not. Then so. so far they went through the open doors, but I mean, make a religion check or an arcana check if you want to know if they can go through solid I think objects. That, I think. I mean, you did see them to... materialize like out of the chairs and floors and stuff. Like they're clearly incorporeal beings. Okay, uh, he's gonna do a religion check, and he got a three, so he's yeah. clueless. So I don't think you really have a good beat on that. So sorry should that this map is so tiny for everyone. Should we keep going? Or should we... I mean, I think you even with the three, they're ghosts. I don't... Barring the door is not going to help you. If they want to come back through the door, they're just going to fly through it, so... Maybe we just... Stand here? I mean... Yeah. We, we kind of decimated their numbers. Was there four left? Yeah, we, and I will say, we don't have time for like a mm. whole big long conversation with the middle battle, so Wanderous, sure. what you gonna do? Okay, so I think and there go, so even cover won't help. I think that Wanderous is gonna ready um, Sacred Flame. Is that the one that's radiant damage? Yeah, Sacred Flame is radiant damage. He's gonna ready Sacred Flame for anything that comes through the door. Okay, they're not going to come back through the door for 60, 55 more seconds, oh. right? Oh, because okay. well, like they're crap. turned for a minute or until they take damage. So they're going to run all directly right. away from you for all a right. whole Given all minute. that, I think that Wanderous is going to open the next set of doors that he's right in front of and see oh. what's there. Screw it, why not? Okay, sure. Well, he's just opening the door and looking. Uh, Wanderous, you open the door. Uh, and you can see that there is a black marble balcony overhanging the northwest corner of the temple. Um, the floor is about 30 feet below, but about half of the balcony, balcony has fallen away, and there are, like, obvious cracks in the floor near the edge. And um, you can see this massive uh, statue now, which I think maybe only... Uh, the, the only Cass has actually seen this thing. Uh, so let me describe it. I think maybe X. Uh, yeah. So there's a 40 foot tall statue of a cowled figure in flowing robes about, I don't know, 25 or 30 feet away from you. Um, the statue's stone hands are outstretched as if it's in the middle of like casting a spell. Um, uh, its face is utter, uh, just a complete void. The shadow and light you can't see inside of it. Um, and you can see uh, this this balcony right next to you. So, Okay, then Wanderous closes the door, turns around and tells everybody quickly, there's the statue, there is a balcony, but half of it is gone. But okay. this is the way to the... This isn't a way to the statue. Because there's no way to get down. Okay, let me get back in there and, and put the door back. And then Wanderous holds his place to see what's going to happen next. And what his friends do. So are you saying we should turn around or... Oh, there was also a... Uh, across the balcony... I, I Let me just... Okay. Across the balcony, I don't know if you can see this, right here is another door, but that balcony does look pretty decrepit. Um, oh, okay. So there is a... If you well, can yeah, get across that, it safely, okay. then then you can get across it safely. There but. is another set of doors, but you would be in sight, I think, of the statue. Yes, you would, the, for sure. The, I mean, as quickly as he could, Wanderers would tell everybody, we okay. could go that way, but we risk getting hit by the statue. So, okay, so you open and shut the door. I'm going to say that uh, opening it is a free action, but shutting it is your action for uh, an yeah. object interaction. Anything else from Wanderers? No. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, so let me ask what everyone's plan is. These guys are going to start fleeing out of sight. Are you guys just going to wait for them all to come back? Because I'm I'm just going to skip through. Like, if it's ten rounds yeah, of you right. guys, like, waiting, yeah. then we're just going like, to wait yeah, till they start coming sweet. back. You know what I mean? So, um, the only other thing that I could think is we could start moving towards the other hallway. And maybe they won't, because by the time we get up there, they're going to be long gone. And maybe they'll come back and they won't, we'll already, we'll, we'll already be gone, right? Yeah, that's true. So maybe okay. we, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. I was going to say, so, um, yeah, fin finish 
that I mean this is happening obviously in quick burst, but like finish that if you're gonna plan to do something, then we'll stay in battle time while you do it. Well, I think Wanders would share that the going forward is very dangerous. We can either we can either hold here or we can move back to that hallway that Cass found. That's all Ash is gonna say, because we're doing it quick. I mean, didn't we well we could check that one out, but it probably I mean if it leads back into the statue we can, room, we'll kinda know and then we can just turn around and like Well and I think that out. it if if we get down there, then if the ghosts, when they come to their senses, they're gonna probably head straight back here to attack us. If we're yeah. gone, then we can get the drop on them if we have to. That's where I'm at. Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, so I think we're gonna move down okay. the hallway if everybody agrees. All right, so we will stay in time then. Uh, this thing has to go a hundred feet as far away from. Uh, Whoever as it can. This one has to do the same thing. These things are going to end up like on the mountainside somewhere as fast as they can move. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cass, you're up. Uh, I don't think you can see. Well, there's maybe one of them you could see if you go back in the hallway. But. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, if we're going to start heading back towards that other room. And five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I don't know if I want to dash and get that far away from the group. Yeah, I mean, you can. I think. I don't know, well, I think if I dash, I can make it down to that hallway. So five. Ash is gonna dash. Twenty-five. Yeah, I dashed. Okay. I and have a question I, for. Like Ash. I'm not far from that door. Okay. Did Ash keep hold of the ewer or whatever it was? Um, yes. Okay. Um, so Cass dashed. PETA, you're up. Um, I am uh, also probably going to dash. So um, let's do... Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's do one... Twenty-five, thirty, and then fifty-five. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that's sixty, and that'll be my turn. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, next up is this thing. All right. All right. Okay. All right, Ash. Okay, I don't know if I can do this on my turn or not, but mm -hmm. can I like do some sort of check on this thing to see if the ghosts are tied to it? It's gonna be tough to figure out. Um, it's gonna be a DC 20 religion or arcana check. And I'm most certainly gonna fail that. I can almost I mean, promise. it's a free action. It's not gonna cost you action economy to do it. So if you wanna just like look at it and think, what do I think about this? Uh, you can. Religion's three, Arcanus three. It really just doesn't matter. I've been rolling religion because of Thorin, but yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this, this this thing is dumb. That's what it is. Yeah. Um. I mean, they showed up when you touched it, but you don't know if that was a trap because of just the room or if they're tied. To, like it's you have no idea. It was a trigger certainly, but if they're tied to it somehow that they can track you with it, or if it just makes them show up, you don't know. I'm positive this isn't what we're looking for, so I'm going to just leave it. Okay. All right, go ahead. And then we're going to use our stuff to get down there. Let me, because I put it in my inventory just in case. How do you delete stuff out of your inventory, by the way, just um, real quick? There is a little, uh, at the bottom of where your inventory is, there's like a lock in the bottom right of it. If you click the lock, it will like open your inventory and you'll see these little red ah, hashtags next to stuff. I didn't know that's what that is. And did. then make sure to lock it back when you're done so you don't yeah. actually delete stuff. But oh, man. Don't mean Love to. That. Roll 20. Wizard expert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time to go bye bye. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Obviously, we're going to dash. 5, 10, 15, 20. 
25 and 30. Okay. And right. so, Wonders, you would have seen Ash literally just put the thing back on the table. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Esmeralda is also going to run up, take a dash action. Uh, that brings us to Wondrous. You know, Wondrous is just looking at that thinking, could that possibly be it? Because ghosts were guarding it. But then there's that big statue down there. Uh, Wondrous is conflicted. You want to make a check about it? Uh-huh. Okay, give me a religion or uh arcana check. Wondrous got a seven. I think you're in the same boat as Ash. You don't have any definitive answers here. Um, and Wondrous what you what you know is it triggered them showing up. Whatever else about it that may or may not be true is eludes you in the brief moment you have to glance at the thing. Well, and Wanderers would trust Ash. So Wanderers is going to uh, dash, which is okay. 60 feet, 5, okay. 10, 15. That's 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 50, 50, 50, 50. Okay, well, he's right inside. Okay. And he left it also. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, which one are you? Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay, that brings us to Cass. Okay, well, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm going to go ahead and dash down the stairs. That way I don't get, like... That separated from the group, so okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, so I'll make it almost down to that first landing. Okay. Peter. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to wait on that. Okay, so I'm probably going to dash as well so let's do okay uh once 20 30 and one two six 55 60 well that'll get me there okay <clears throat> so. okay now this thing is like five feet off the map <laughs> ash Okay, um, I'm going to do something kind of silly. Okay. I think that I'm going to step back and shut this door. Okay. I know that they can probably go through it, but my reasoning is like, maybe they won't second guess it if it looks to be shut, you know? Okay, okay so it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and I'll dash as well. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That gets me at the end of this rope here, though. Okay. Esmeralda will follow. She'll dash. Technically, I'm just going to put her. She's, like, off the map kind of here, but she's, like, 10 feet in front of Ash. 15, actually. Um, Wanderous. Wanderous is following. He's got 60 feet. Huh? 5, 10, 15, 20. And he closes that door, too. Actually, that would put her here. Okay. Okay, you close that door as well? Yes, 20, okay. 25, 30. Well, okay, I think he stops at 30, seeing where Cass is and just not wanting to get terribly, leaving Cass terribly behind. He's going to just do 30. Okay. And you know what? I think he readies the sacred flame, because why not? It's a cantrip. Okay. If that door opens before the next move, or, or okay. if anything comes through the door. Okay. As you guys rush down the stairs. You are not followed by these... 
ghostly creatures. And I will move you to another map. Give me just a minute to do some stuff. Do a little bookkeeping. It's like that's just, just, just for me, you know? Okay, so you begin to head down the second, uh, down the stairs. Let me see if I can, let's first of all take all your old dudes off. Uh, okay, so let's see, I think this is going to put her. Actually, I think I can just basically put you guys like this. Boom. This may not be exactly where you were. This is like a rough marching order. Uh, but Esmeralda was in the front. So we're going to drag you guys over to the new map. Nice. And you are all over here in the bottom left corner. Um, so this landing comes down... Uh, and Esmeralda sort of steps out uh, and kind of... Actually, she sees this and kind of, like, up against the wall and, like, takes a peek out. Um, and does not seem to see anything that wants to kill her immediately and gestures towards the rest of you uh, if you want to follow her out. We are now out of initiative order. Uh, the shades that you had angered uh, will not follow you here for whatever reason whether they didn't realize what you whether your gambit with the door worked or whatever else uh they gone okay uh, and as you all come out into this bigger room i have to go find it okay <clears throat> so down here uh glistening in the light that you've brought with you uh, amber coats all of the walls and the ceiling of this pretty enormous hall. Uh, it's like 30 feet across and extends, we'll call this north, about as far as any of you can see with the amount of light that you've brought with you. You can see a door to the south. Um, and you can see directly across from you set into the wall at about a height of five feet are amber ledges lined with life-sized alabaster statues of cats frogs hawks owls ravens rats snakes toads and weasels uh, but many of them have fallen off of their perches to lie shattered on the floor over on this side over here um so there's just like busted marble um and you, I think, can see from here. Yeah, you can see from here that there's a door a little bit north and a door a little bit south. And then the hall extends much farther to the north. Okay. Well. So I think you probably think you are, like, directly underneath that hallway with the flame skulls where you were just a minute ago. It's like this came around the back and curled into like a lower hallway. And you would recognize like the width of this hallway. You're like straight underneath of that. If that makes sense. It's kind of strange that all the walls in here are that amber color. Maybe we're kind of getting closer to where we're trying to go. One would hope. Do you want to look at this south door first, or should we... I think maybe we should see what's in this hallway first before we start opening doors and letting other stuff in. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, before we get to, to any other undead, I have none of that last until we rest. So maybe we should find a place to take a short rest. Maybe. Okay. Well, where are you going to go? Maybe we should scout north first. It would be better to rest in a smaller place. I agree. 
Should we check at the south doors to see if by any chance that's a room underneath that other room where we were? Mm, that's a good point. I will stand guard here if somebody wants to check that. Okay. Okay. Check it and real you quick. said there were that this was a door down here, okay. right? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll back you up, so Ash. Give it. Well, I just opened the last one. Does that matter? Are we trying to be mm-hmm. up to you guys? Doesn't what matter. Wanderers is going to open the door. You I'll open with Wanderers. Wanderers and Kaz are opening you the open door. Open the door. You find a very small room. In this room, in the south, east, and west walls, are large amber sarcophagi. Oh, crap. Probably don't want to do a rest in here. Um, let me find the. Stand by, please. Um, The room has the same amber glazed walls. The floor is grayish marble with black veins. And these three amber sarcophagi stand in the alcoves. Um, You begin to hear this like faint whispering. Can I tell what language that is? um, Or is that a language? I... I, I mean, think I think you can tell what language it is. And I don't think you like that you can tell what language it is because it's not a language you know. But it is a language you hear sometimes. Ah. Uh, um <clears throat> you definitely feel like a pull into the room. Does right. Wondrous feel it also? No, not at all. This room's creepy and weird. You don't hear okay. any whispers, Wandrous. Um Do I see Kaz starting to be drawn into the room? I mean, that's up to Cass. Don't ask me. Cass, like- you feel this pull, but it's not like dragging you off your feet, like oh, you're being okay. sucked into the room by a vortex, but like you... You, and you guys have brought light with you, and Cass, your shadow is like spilling into the room. Mm. Okay. From where I'm at, can I tell if there's any kind of significance to these uh, sarcophagi without actually going into the room? Um, I mean, you could make a religion check. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, I. So I think, as far as you know, whatever the darkness is that's like attached to you and stuff, it doesn't have like worshippers necessarily, like a god would. You know what I mean? There's not like a cult. It's just like this this ill omen this thing yeah. this spirit you know it, i mean it may have powers like a god or a demigod but it's not like a you know so this is actually really weird um i don't think you've ever encountered anything that actually resonated with this being before but you do feel like a resonance in this room it's like whatever's in here is kind of on the same like wavelength a little bit um but i don't know that you would have any idea what that means or represents Um. Oh wait, maybe not that. Okay. <clears throat> Can I cast protection from evil and good on myself? Sure. I want to cast that on myself and then okay. walk into the room. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll post it in like the yeah. chat, but basically like I can't be charmed, frightened or possessed. Mm-hmm. And I have, and, and then they have dis, and then they have disadvantage on any attack rolls that last for 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you cast this spell on you. 
Uh, what do you think? How how does that manifest? Is it something visible, or is there like an like an aura, or a sound, or even like a smell, or is it just like I feel like it'd be something like a, invisible. Like I feel like it'd be a blue aura at first. Okay. And then as it like covers me, it just kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you feel you uh, begin to emit this kind of blue aura as you step into the room. And what you see is that, like, flickering in the shadows around and behind the sarcophagi. The shadows behind them begin to disappear completely. And even with the blue glow, the shadow that is attached to your feet just gets thicker and darker and uh, you feel like a strange kind of tingling sensation where your feet connect with the shadow but you have this spell on you you don't feel any attempt to charm or possess you mm -hmm. but uh, the shadows are just absorbed and you stand then in this room even in the darkness, just fully devoid of any shadow whatsoever. It's like your vision is blocked by where the sarcophagi are, right? Like, you can't see through them or anything, but, like, right. normally as you move around, the shadows would, you know, kind yeah. of move with the light source that you're emitting, uh, and they're just not casting any shadow. Is there anything else that could be significant about this room? As you Other investigate, you do see uh, some, like, names on the bottom of the sarcophagi. Uh, is it in a language I can read? Yes, uh, they are just in common. Oh, okay. Any names of any kind of significance or anything? I don't believe you've ever heard of any of them. Um... You're closest to the West Sarcophagus. If you look at that name, it says Norganus, the Finger of Oblivion. I mean, okay, so Norganus, Finger of Oblivion. I think Cass would just kind of walk around and kind of take in the names on the uh, yeah. sarcophagi and then walk out if there's nothing else significant at all. Yeah. Uh, the southern one that you move to next says Vond, the evasive. And the final one says Syriac, the hound whisperer. All right. Um, but and, and other than that, you don't see any um, any other uh, you know, treasure chests, you know. Yeah. Anything. It's just the sarcophagi. Okay. Well, head back out of the room and link up with Wondrous. Wondrous would close the door and say, What? What did you see? I don't think we should rest in there. I got some really weird. Like, I was feeling some really weird energy before I went in there. Uh, but there's three sarcophagi in there with names on them. I don't know if this has any kind of meaning to anyone, but Norganus, the Finger of Oblivion, Vaughn, the Evasive, and Seriac, the Hellhound Whisperer. I'd... Would that ring? Not with me, I feel sure. A bell with anyone like maybe Esmeralda? Yeah, she shakes her head. Okay. No idea. I, mean, I, I, I just, I don't like the feel of that room. In a very precarious position. This is a weird place. I, I so um, uh, I'll I'll kind of mention this uh, after we are done talking about that. Um, I I mean I can cast Liam and Sinai Hut at any time to protect us from anything, um, if we wish. So. Well, that would be a long rest, and of course, if those ghosts came back, they might find us again, but they couldn't get at us in Liam's tiny hut. We would at least know they were there. 
if we rest, I get my two channel divinities back, which have certainly come in handy so far. I mean, I mean, if anything, I can cast it um, whenever we want to. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a long rest, but it can just protect us for um, whatever time we need. Yeah. I mean, if we did that, it might be a good opportunity for Ash to... Well, actually, no, I don't know that they found that book. Never mind. But also, yes, it would be a really good chance for me to... Look at <laughs> <laughs> I think just while we're pondering for a minute, Wanderous is going to walk a little bit closer to one of these niches or two. Does okay. he hmm. see anything in there? I'm, he's he's not touching. <laughs> not touching. Um, but just You the, see what I described. It is a series of very particular little uh, you know um, animal. animals things. made in marble. Uh, some of which have fallen off of their pedestals and become broken. Um, but no, you don't see anything. Are there any... Is, it, is that another door that goes like back under the stairs? Yes, this is another the door right here. Turns. Okay, then I think Wanderous heads for that door. Okay, check it out. There's another door, should we open yeah, Ash it? Ash is going to go ahead and scoot. A little bit further north, just to where we can kind of see down this hallway, but not quite any further. Just okay. as kind of okay, a... Wanderers is going to... What is everybody else doing? Are they... Yeah, I'm going to chill right here just to kind of watch you back. I'll be behind Wanderers. One second here. Ask what you doing? Oh. <clears throat> I mean, I'm staying with the group. Why does Kaz have an... Oh, I know. Never mind. Never mind. That's protection. Okay, then yeah. Wondrous is going to open the door and peek in. Okay. Okay. You open the door and peek into that room. Uh, and you find furnishings made of ancient colorless wood collapsing under their own weight, uh, lying covered with cobwebs and dust. You see sort of like uh, a what used to be a bed and like a chair and a little chest of drawers kind of thing. Um, and that it's all just ancient and like the wood is sort of just cracked and rotted from like the cold and wet. And was it also an amber door? Uh, I believe so. I believe all of the doors. Yeah, you said that. I was just... Okay, yeah. then I think I, that uh, Wanderers is actually going to look, walk in and look and investigate the room to see okay. if there's anything of value in there. So he is actually going to investigate. Okay. Uh, there is not anything in this room. Then he would look back out uh, and And I say, will also say, sorry, real quick, Ash... Uh, from here, you do see another room north of this one, and you can see from here this hallway that does kind of look like it leads out into that bigger chamber. Like, you just see the edge of it, but... Okay. The only thing I could see this being is a smaller room to take a rest. There's nothing in here. It's probably where the priest slept or something. And Wanderous comes back out and closes the door and just looks at the rest of the group. You think that's a good place for us to take a rest? I think that that might be our next step. Might be a good a short rest. I don't know if it, you know, I, I don't know. If you guys think what we need a long one. Um, like I said, I can cast uh, this spell at any point uh, to protect us. So just... Whenever you guys want to rest, let me know. So it's Ash is good to keep going, but like you guys are the ones that have spell slots and things that need recharged. I don't have anything, so it's kind of just yeah. up to y'all. Um, this is not a decision that I can make. Esmeralda no. has only used her fourth level slot, I think. No, and one of her first levels, so she's in good shape. Um, <laughs> she well, could benefit that, from a short uh, rest, but. 
Wanderus would get his channel divinities back. So why don't uh, we just take a uh, sorry, short, on rest a short or a long rest, Wanderus? Well, it says um, channel divinity. When you finish a short or long rest, you okay. regain your expended uses. Well, there you go. So let's let's at least take a, a short one because the turn undead yep. has been a literal lifesaver. So yeah, it really um, has. I can also uh, play a song of rest uh, to help us all uh, kind of heal up if we need to. Um, so out of game or out of character, that basically just means. Um, uh, an extra 1d6 um, to uh, the hit die. So Nice. What is this thing? 20 feet wide? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, or is it 10? Uh, yes. Public. Uh, that is a 10 foot okay. radius. So okay. it's, yeah, 20 feet wide. Okay. There you go. All right. So it basically fills this whole room. Um, and you guys can pop in there for an hour. It's a ritual spell, right? Yep, it's a ritual spell, and I have so ritual casting as a bard, so it doesn't use a spell slot. slot. Well, I'm gonna. Oh. Okay. You guys shut yeah, the so door I can or leave it open. the channel divinities. And I am gonna use a couple of hit dice. Okay. Do you guys shut the door or leave it open? We shut um, it. Okay. Yeah, I'm cool with that. And right. um, I'm playing my song of rest as well, so go ahead and feel free to add it. Additional uh, D6. Okay, is it D6 per hit die or just one D6? Uh, ba -ba -ba, song of Rest. Uh, that is um, bring the creature form. Uh, rest by one or more. He uh, each one of those creatures gain an additional extra, or gain an extra one D6 hit points. So okay. I think it's just, just one D6. for whatever okay. they roll. Um, can I? So it's per hit per hit die. Gee, I didn't want to roll clear to all me. of those. That's no, it's just it's just it's just one d six total. It's just additional one d six, but still, one one is better than none. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh wow, that did okay. It. So I get ten back. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'll roll I think the... this is gonna get her full twenty seven. Is anyone still not at full health? Because I can use. Uh, some lay on hands Three. to get him back to full health. Eight was Wonders overkill for me. So. I'm tracking this back on an to NPC. his uh, aid, <laughs> his seventy. Let me just say, tracking hit dice on an NPC sucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't give you anywhere on the sheet to do it. You have to make your own oh. stuff up. Oh no! As long as she has a full character sheet, it's just like the NPC block. Okay. Yeah, it's just a little. Uh, but she's back at full, so she's good. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna use uh, nine of my lay on hands to get me back up to full. Then. Okay. Um, and I would like... Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay. So you're looking at the uh, tome book thing. Uh, is someone investigating the staff from the burned corpse as well? Yes, I am. Okay. Absolutely. So, Ash, what you discover is that this puppy is a tome of understanding. I understand now. I don't know what that means. This book contains intuition and insight exercises, and its words are charged with magic. If you spend 48 hours over a period of six days or fewer studying the book's contents and practicing its guidelines, your wisdom score increases by two, as does your maximum for that score. The manual then loses its magic but regains it in a century. So you oh, can wow. permanently buff your wisdom by two. But it requires 48 hours of study over a period of six days. So it's not like something you can do right this instant, you know, but it can be done. So that's what that is. Wow. That is the Tome of Understanding. Well, I got my campsite read material, friends. <laughs> Whenever I take my bush break, I guess this is what I read. And um, the thing, the staff is... <clears throat> A staff of frost. Yeah. And it requires attunement by a druid, sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. So none of you can use it. Rip. Uh, the staff has ten charges. While holding it, you can use an action to expend one or more charges to cast one of the following spells. Uh, the staff regains some charges at dawn. It can cast clone of cold, fog cloud, ice storm, or wall of ice. Uh, and it regains 1d6 plus 4 charges at dawn. If you expend the last charge, 
Roll a d20 on a one, the staff is destroyed. Oof. Um, Wanderous' mentor could use this, but I don't think anyone you else... You mean Onyx's mentor? Yes, sorry. O Onyx's mentor could use this. Yeah, well, so we know Wanderous people this So if you, like, gave Wanderous it to him, maybe it would be a it. replacement for his other staff, but it, none of you can use it, so... Wanderous um, is definitely going to keep it. Okay. So there's a Staff of Frost and the Tome of Understanding. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess it needs to go in my inventory that I have it, but I can't do that use for you? it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it would just go, like, where... Yes, like this, under your where astronaut. My, where my uh, traveler's clothes and all that stuff goes. Yes. Okay. Well, Onyx could use it too, I guess, huh? Mm. Technically, yes. Yep. Dear old Onyx. Mm. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, any other stuff that anyone wants to discuss or think about talk about role play here or are we just sort of zipping through this uh quick um rest i'm good with just uh zipping through it yeah same okay well you take an hour uh and then you can dismiss and everyone's back at whatever hit points uh what would you like to do so the path to the right up here seems to go back out to that hallway. So maybe we should check the next, the the northern pa passageway. Let's be very careful crossing the hallway. We just don't know what the, what yeah. the, um, how far that statue can see. Absolutely, it, uh, we don't know what the range on it is for sure. I still think it's worth checking all the doors because if we pass one up that could be the one right mm -hmm. yeah so ash would make their way out to the, to the way to the next door on the north or yeah, you know, on the northern path okay. well i think wanders wants to be extremely stealthy as he crosses this pathway that we think leads back to the statue okay i guess make self checks i, I guess i will I hope it's a good one. Oh, hey, I got a 20. Uh, oh, got a 12. no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ash. Uh, How does the road roll in that one? Nope. Absolutely Here not. I have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> reputation. Thank you. 21. Okay. Okay, let me try. I'm oh, probably going to get a negative. Hey, 16. All right. Oh, my bad minus. roll. Oh, wait, no, roll. heavy armor. Thing. Oh, it's wait, a three. Wait for heavy armor, I rolled. Yeah, it's a three. Oof. Feels bad. Okay. Uh, um, you're going up to that next door? Yeah. Oh, also, I guess Esmeralda has to come too, huh? <laughs> I mean, I guess. I don't know. Uh, What's her stealth? Okay. That's fine. All right. Uh, who's who's where and who's opening the door? Um, I'd probably be right behind Ash. Okay. Okay, uh, I can open like this one. Behind well, Pita. Wanders is tiptoeing. It's so cute to see a fur bulk in a comforter tiptoe across a hallway. That is funny. <laughs> okay. Opening the door. Let's open her up. All righty. Uh, in this door. Um, it was once a bedchamber like the other, but it is littered with broken furnishings. Scattered about the room are the remains of a bed, a wardrobe, two trunks, three tall candlesticks, a desk, a bookshelf, and several chairs. There are torn up books, old quill pens, and tattered clothes strewn about. Okay, this is where they keep the trash. Do we want to take a look in here? Do you think it's worth it? I'm not um, not really I, speaking I, to me, I'll tell you. I, I don't really think it's worth it. Yeah, not really feeling it. Okay. Ash is going back away. I'm not going to bother shutting it. But Okay. Uh, from here now, Ash, you can see another door here. Um, 
or I guess whoever can see this far enough can see this. Uh, and you can see actually at another door at the end of the hall that is slightly ajar. Okay, yeah, I, I think I can see that. Um, is it amber? With my dark vision. Um, I'd imagine. I, I'll, I mean, I would say it is if it is. <laughs> yeah, I think all of the, I think every door that okay. it... Um, let, I guess let me look real quick, see if it tells me anything else. Not rogue things. <laughs> yeah, amber doors. Yes, they are all amber doors. Cool. Okay. Awesome. The quest continues to open every single amber door that exists in this temple, I guess. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, which door are you headed to first? And who's Wanders heading there heads. and in what the order? Wanders heads to the next little door. Huh? Which is this one, right? Waits for everybody to get up with him, and then he's going to open it and look in. Okay. Uh, Wanderous, you attempt to open the door. It is locked. I tried to open it, Ash. It's locked. Do you think it's worth you trying your roguish magic? Also, please uh, talk into your mic when you want. Do you think it's worth you trying your Not roguish quite that magic? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Okay. Slot of hand, yeah? Sure. 22. 22. As you feel like you could pick the lock, you feel the last bolt on it sort of like click into place as many have before. Uh, and you go to push the door open. Some bitch is still locked. Appears to be magical. Uh, I want y'all to know that this usually doesn't happen. <laughs> Hashtag rogue things. Um, something's keeping this closed. Wanderous is, is peering through that open door. Uh huh. And in his line of sight, I mean, you have it that I can see it. Yep, I you think do. You see something. Indeed. And something. Oh, crap. Sees you. Oh crap! <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> oh and no! So, um, I would like everyone to please, <laughs> once again, roll me some initiative. Oh boy! Son of a boop. Oh, Wanderers didn't do so well this time. Hey, Five. thirteen. Oh, none of us did well. <laughs> okay, I uh, rolled a 13 as well um, on. on that. I hate how they do this to me. I will also be right back. Did Esmeralda roll? No, I haven't gone to her yet. Okay, that's that. And then you... Lamo. Okay, is everybody on here? One, two, three. F okay. Uh, yes, everybody's on here. Okay. Yep. So you all kind of like notice each other at the same time. Your eyes lock from across the room. Spider Man Dad, drinks has the bigger rest of rhythms boom. <laughs> um, and seeing Wondrous uh mention that there's something in there. Uh, Esmeralda has the first shot and is going to rush over here. Actually, it's going to rush up here and through the corner of the door is going to throw her hand axe. Um, one of them anyway. An 11 to hit. I don't think that's going to hit. Uh, no, it does not. Uh, so it clatters into the room and then let's see. She ducks over out of the way of the door. Uh, one of these creatures comes uh, bolting out. Hang on. This place sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, this one is going to pop out here. Pop? I'm back. Pop, pop out here. Oh, pop. Um, and 
it is going to look at one of the four of you. We're going to roll some dice to see who. It's going to look at Cass. Oh, How God. long does protection from evil and good last? Uh, ten minutes. Okay, so you guys took a so short it's rest. It's gone. So that's yeah. Gone. yeah. Okay, uh, I need you to please make a deception check. Okay, one second. Oof. Oh, deception check. Shoot, let's see. Where is it? Oh, right here. Fourteen. Okay. Ozzy, or Cass, you feel like a presence uh, sort of like <sighs> ah, it's oh, just no. like you feel like a mental touch of something gleaning something from your mind oh no uh, I need you to tell me you can tell me directly or you can say it out loud or text it to me you need to tell me a secret about Cass it, it can be a secret that I already know, but it is going to be a secret that this Nothic will now know. So, make that clear to me in whatever way you want. And, uh... Let's see, I All think right, that takes its second, action. It does. Why? This is a bunch of weird stuff. Okay, and then while you are doing that, it actually is going to like slink back into the shadows. All right, sent on Facebook. Okay, and another one is going to slink out, and interesting. Uh, another one is going to slink out and do the same thing. Let's see who their target is. PETA. Okay, PETA, oh I need a deception check, please. Okay, deception check. Let's do... Where is that? There it is. Aha. Ooh. That is a 17. Damn, they're rolling good. Uh, <laughs> you experience the same thing. I need you to tell or text me a secret that this creature learns about PETA. Okay. Da -da. Um, I will also be sending this via Facebook. Okay. Uh, and then this one also slinks back into the room. As I'm frantically trying to think of a, a, a secret Same about it. I know. I just, like, I bro, know I just like, bro, I just like came up with something. <laughs> um, and you hear like them wi almost like whispering to each other in the room. Uh, that brings us to PETA. Okay, um... Ba -ba -ba -ba. These things are. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and cast a Hypnotic Pattern, okay. I think. Because I think with my vision, I can see uh, at least, uh, like, these two here. Okay. Um, It's like this sure. uh, there, so I'm going to go ahead and... And what is the area of Hypnotic Pattern? Uh Oh, not that. Uh, Hold on. Oh, I think I messed up my sheet. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so this is how it reads. Uh, it's a 30 30 foot, foot cube. cube. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I should have saved this template when we did this last time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to just use this and we'll just make this hypnotic pattern. I'll just change the name on it and stuff. Okay, uh, and it needs to be, you said, 30 feet. So this is 5, yep. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, that's the right size. Damn. Okay, okay this is <laughs> hypnotic pattern. And it can be controlled by Omega. Uh, okay, so you can... Yeah, I think you can put the center of this in a place that... If you put it, like, right here where you can see, it'll get them all. So... Okay, yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
and okay. um, it is uh, ba -ba -ba, wisdom saving throw uh, on their end. And if they fail to save, they become um, incapacitated, basically. Okay. Do I have more room down here? No, I don't. There we go. Sorry, I have like a bunch of templates, and some of these are still onyxes, so. No, it's, you're good. You're good. But I like to keep them saved so that that way I don't have to keep remaking them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, uh, what kind of save is it? Wisdom? Uh, wisdom. Okay. Uh, DC 15. Wisdom, DC 15. All four of them in the cube must make the save. Uh, brap, 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 brap. Um, okay, I'll go left to right. Uh, fail, fail, pass, fail. Okay. So they cool. are charmed. We'll just give them this little sleepy face. Fail. Fail. Pass. Fail. Okay. All right. Um, free action. I'm just going to cut a yellow. I've, uh, I believe I've gotten a couple of them stunned. Okay. If that um, works. <laughs> yeah. Another one creeps to the door. Rolls a d4. Oof. Pass again. I need another deception check. They're rolling crazy All good on righty. these. You're gonna run out of secrets, aren't you? <laughs> 13, all right. That didn't do it. It was a 21. Basically, you guys are rolling against their insight, and I have not rolled yeah. over a 20 this entire time. It was like 21, 24. I critted on one of you. God. Okay. Go ahead and continue. I'm going to have to, yeah. like... No, that's all right. Um, okay, and then he slinks back into the corner. Uh, Cass is up, though. Okay. Well, I will send you this here in a second. Okay, yeah, that's all good. Basically going to get up here, like, kind of next to the door. Um, do I have a clear shot at this one? Um... I mean, the door's... The door's kind of closed. Um, if not, it's fine. I think it probably has at least half cover, but I mean, it's like incapacitated. So whatever that probably cancels out. I feel like it's charm. It's incapacitated. Yeah. yeah so, it, I mean, you have, you'd have like advantage damage, on, yeah. on hitting it, but yeah, it'll uh, take it out of its super. So, um, that's oh. up to you. I don't care, but well, I, wait, yeah. Like, if there's one that's, like, not in a stupor, which obviously there, there is. There has to be one because it moved up to yeah, the Yeah, but I don't, it, it, like, hid cleverly behind the other two, so I don't know if you can see it from your vantage point, really. Yeah, and then, like, I don't want to draw one out of its stupor. I'd rather just take him on one at a time. Okay. Okay. Uh, any, um, so that's your movement. Any action or anything, or was that your dash? No, I didn't dash. Okay. Um, no, I think that's going to be it. I'm just going to use my movement okay. and call it. All right, Ash, you're up. Okay, Ash is going to move into this room real quick. 5, okay. 10, 15. Set over pixel. Huh? 20. Oh, you said it. Okay. Um, I'm going to say as you go in, it pushes the door open. Cause... Okay. okay, I got to think about this. I can use 25 to get up in melee with this guy, but then my disengage really isn't going to do much, and I'm going to be locked in here with these guys. First well, you don't have to disengage from the ones that are incapacitated. Like, the ones that right. are charmed can't try to... So what you're looking oh, for no. okay. is if one of them moves, Ash. So yeah, this like, one guy may chase after me, but that's about that's about it. Okay, we're going to 25, I think, there. Okay. We're going to attack the non-incapacitated one. Okay. Twenty to hit. Uh, 20 hits. 
Okay, and just with the slashing, slashing damage, that's 10. Okay. And then I will bonus action disengage and move down. Yeah, and you hear line. this, like, whisper in your mind that's just like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, that guy is in a stupor. Wandris, you're up. All right. Okay. Oh, also, I should describe these creatures to you. Um, they are these like loathsome, hunched over humanoid creatures, uh, but they have this massive, just green eye. Um, I don't think I can drag their picture just straight onto the board, can I? No. That's annoying. Um, but they are uh, pretty gritty looking. Okay, Wanderous races into the room, okay. and he, he that's his movement. I took his movement. Yep. He can see the one that um, he saw that Ash yeah. attacked one of them. Um, also, sorry, I, I want to remind everybody who had aid cast on them, so Ash, Wanderous, and Cast, your hit point has been raised by five for the duration of that spell, which was like however many hours. So you may not have passed your hit point maximum or whatever, or you may have put it in temperature. Oh, I whatever. definitely did. But um, you out. might have more than just what your actual maximum is. Anyway, sorry, no, uh, Wanderous, I, I, continue. I did that. Okay, so Wanderous races in and can see that, he, that one of them has been hurt. Okay. And the first thing that he is going to do is he is going to cast his spiritual weapon. Okay. Over top of the one that is, um, that he can tell has already been damaged. Okay. Okay. And that, so what, what his I'm spiritual covered. weapon looks like to remind you, um. Yeah, I have it. It's, it's, uh, it's the orchid. It's orchid colored tiny little stars yes. that kind of just attack him around the head, like okay. circle his head and, and yep. attack and it. primarily the eye. I think Wanderers would try to aim it towards the eye. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. Okay. And then he's going to follow it up with Sacred Flame, but the same guy. Okay. Okay. So the Sacred Flame, oh, excuse me, no, the uh, spiritual weapon. Okay, he makes his 21 save. 21 to hit. 21 hits, 20. but he does make the save on Sacred Flame. So roll for Spiritual Weapon. But he... Spiritual Weapon hits, he made the save on Sacred Flame. So go and roll your damage for Spiritual Weapon. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I kind of did it all at once. He he made the save, but you hit him with your... Okay, 10 attack. damage. All right. Anything and else then, from uh, Wondrous? Wand Wondrous, um... Knowing that he moved, that he did the doorway, that was, yeah, that was 25 feet of movement, but he's going to go ahead and move up five feet okay. to make a little bit more room for somebody else to get in the room. All right. Well, somebody else is Esmeralda, who's going to scooch in with 20 feet of movement. She's got three attacks. Boom, boom. Boom. Uh, 20 hits, 13 misses, 16 hits for... 21 points of damage. Uh, the thing is in pretty bad shape. Uh, she is just going to back up her five feet. Hopefully let somebody else get in on it. Um, actually, no. She's going to back further in. Uh, it is going to get an attack of opportunity. But, you know, she's got a lot of hit points, right? She can take it. <laughs> probably. <laughs> That's two attacks. I only wanted one. Uh, 17, I think, does hit her. Exactly hits her. Damn. For seven points of slashing damage to Esmeralda. Okay. This guy is not awake. Uh, this one's not awake. Peta. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. I got to get you back I... on screen here. It's, uh, I'm going to move up, so, um, uh, let's see, move here, um, shoot, concentration, this is a yeah. instantaneous, um, I'm going to try to cast Vicious Mockery, I think, um, because okay. I think that's, I can still, uh, cast that, right? 
Yeah. Um, okay. Since it's instantaneous. Uh, yeah. So, this is Mockery. That is going to be uh, DC 15 Wisdom Save and yeah. 4 Psychic. So roll to 17. Okay, cool. So, it makes um, the save. I'm just going to go ahead and just stay here for now, just so that way I can hold a concentration on this spell. Um, okay. And that'll be it. Okay. Um, I think Esmeralda did the most damage to it. So it is going to turn its eye over to her and use its rotting gaze. She has to make a DC 12 constitution save. <coughs> exactly makes it. Um, which causes no effect. So it doesn't even do half damage. It just does nothing. Way to go, Esmeralda. Uh, Cass, you're up. Okay, let's see. Five. <laughs> oh, also, I should 50. describe. Uh, so this room also has amber glazed walls, but the floor of this one is like a purplish black marble. Okay. There are two amber sarcophagi in the alcoves to the east and west, but there is another one to the north uh, that is shattered on the floor. Uh, it okay. seems to have been that way for quite some time. Are these things undead? That would require a uh, religion or arcana check. Uh, roll in religion now. And that's an eight. That is an eight. Um, you don't think so? Okay. Uh, long sword it is. Like, then. you don't detect decay on these guys. Right. Um, but they are weird creatures, so... Okay, well, to be safe, I'm gonna use my long sword. Okay. 22. 22 hits. T uh, 12 slashing. Okay, the one that everyone's been wailing on is... Dead. Nice. Uh, and Cass, as you enter the room, once again, your shadow spreads across the floor and begins slurping up the shadows of those two sarcophagi. Okay. Um, and maybe... Okay, I, so, so I can use here. an extra attack to immediately start on another one, right? Yes, you can. Okay, I'm going to get this one, you know, okay. kind of next to me and Ash. Go for it. Are you Not a... twenty. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, that's a crit. It. Uh. Okay. So that's seventeen total. <sighs> Brutal. You gonna smite? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna smite. No way. You know what? Okay. But he smite. gets. I mean, if it's a crit, he gets the extra damage. Yeah. I mean, you double your smite damage too. So. Ooh, nice. Well, okay. it, and we and the crit rules apply. So. Yes. It's okay, like. So however many. I'm going to. Is. Might at level one. Okay. Let's see. Where is... Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay, so that's 12 points of radiant damage okay. with... not. That's not with that's the not crit. That's not with the crit. Applied. So that'll be plus 16. 12 plus 16? God. Is that 28? That's 30, <clears throat> I think. Or no, yeah, no, 28, yeah. That is exactly how many hit points it has. <laughs> so with that one crit, you take this thing from full health to dead immediately. Hey, bring on Strahd. Just bam. Don't even um, say that. <laughs> okay, so that's your two attacks, Cass. Anything else? Mm, no. Okay. Ash, you're up. Okay, we're going to scoot over here next to Wondrous and start to work on this other guy. Okay. <clears throat> well, you have advantage because it's incapacitated. And I think that's all that incapacitated 28 does. 28 with advantage. Okay. Uh, why am I keep wanting on these sneak attacks? It's 13 <laughs> plus 4. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, minus 13. And then I would like to bonus action disengage. Boop. Okay. And this thing wakes up when it's hit. 
And that makes it its turn. And Ash, it is going to use its rotting gaze on you. I need a constitution saving throw. You see 12. One. Okay, well, same thing happens to you that happened to Esmeralda, which is nothing. Wondrous, you're up. Okay, Wondrous moves his spiritual weapon over to the new guy that's awake okay. and hits him with the spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, oh, 12 does not hit. Okay, Wondrous is going to use uh, his chat inspiration. He's tired of not hitting anything with his spiritual weapon. And that's a 27 to 27 hit. does hit. Okay. For 13 points of damage. Okay. Yeah, uh, your weapon slams into it. It is in rough shape, but it is still kicking. Okay. And then I think... I think he's going to um, just whack it with his, uh, well, let me wait, hold on just a minute, follows it up, sacred flame, yeah, let's go ahead and let's hit it with the, with the sacred flame. Okay. So that is a dex save from it. No, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm dithering, I disagree okay. with that. Wondrous is going to hit it with these quarterstaff. Okay. Go for it. Oh, that one. He shouldn't have dithered. Damn. Yeah. Okay. He rolled a nine on his deck save. He would have failed. But you swing your quarter to seven and yeah, miss. Yeah, I did. I changed my mind. Okay. Uh, Esmeralda can hit it from here. So she's going to take two rapiers and one hand axe once again. Ooh, um, and that 20. Okay. So uh, she does nine damage and then 10 damage and misses. Um, but she got a nat 20. So minus... Yeah, so that's the... Oh, that's not even 10. That's... This should have been uh, 8. So that's 14. So she does 9 plus 14. It's dead. I, I'm not even going to do the math. Hagon. So she uh, stabs it and... 23 <laughs> is what it was. She, she swiftly stabs it, stabs it twice. Um, and it's like once in the eye and then once in the stomach and it just keels over. Um... That's it for her. This guy is unconscious or incapacitated. This guy's not in the order. Peter, you're back up. Okay. Um, bonus action, giving Cass a uh, bardic inspiration die. Um, okay. And then uh, gonna do uh, vicious mockery again, just to okay. do something. All right. Uh, <laughs> wisdom save. And that one on the wisdom save. That one that is a uh, six psychic damage, and so, they have um, let's see let's disadvantage see on their next attack. Uh, one. Yes. Okay. Uh, where's like a sad face? They have like a sad face. We'll just I guess we we'll use this. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So they come screeching into consciousness uh, with this painful lancing psychic mockery, uh, granting them disadvantage on their next attack. Brings us to Cass. You're up. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 21 hits. Oh, sorry, I, I was muted. No worries. Uh, that'll be 10. Okay, 10 damage. Uh, I'm not going to smite, but I'm going to use my extra attack. Okay, let it rip. Also, FYI, my, uh, Inspiration can be used for uh, your attack roll or for your um, damage. It can. Mm -hmm. Okay, how much I does that give so. me? Uh, see, it a yeah. D8. Uh, yeah, D8. Also, nineteen hits. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Pretty so sure. can I can I roll up D D8 for the first one? Either one. I mean, it's it, they both hit, so it kind of is all the same, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. I'll, I'll just apply it to this one then. Okay. So then. Damage, so that's another twelve. Okay. Plus eight. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> it is still, <laughs> it's still kicking, but barely. Is it? Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, Anything else good. from Cass? No, that's it. All right, Ash. Okay. But boop up here and slash at it. All right. Let it rip. Eighteen. 18 hits. 
And then we got seven oh, plus I I... another one. What is up with this Oof. sneak attack? There's been right a now. lot of well, ones today. It's uh, hey. it's dead. I accidentally deleted you from the turn order, but it's dead, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, yeah, you cut this weird creature down, and um, as you finish cutting this thing down, uh, Cass's shadow, um finishes absorbing all the other shadows in this room uh everyone uh Cass, you definitely noticed this but everyone else i would like you to make me a dc 15 perception check please all right uh, uh i did not make it i got a 12 okay wandrus got a 23 wandrus and ash both do notice this weird behavior of the shadows and Cass, you definitely noticed it as well uh, but I believe that is where we are going to call this episode of Curse of Strahd as it uh, as it finishes. Uh, so you stand um, and at this point now, uh, the other people in the room do still have shadows, but all of the objects um, and the, the Nothics and all of that. Uh, what really I'll, I'll tell you what actually happens here is that the two sarcophagi no longer have shadows but the pieces of the sarcophagi to the north does uh but the people the pieces of the sarcophagi to the north and the dead creatures still have shadows but weirdly those other two sarcophagi are blank and as you no longer have that protection from evil and good on you Cass, you just feel this like exultation coming from uh, whatever it is that is attached to you as it is absorbing whatever this is. Oh. And that, my friends, is what we're going to call it for this episode of Curse of Strahd. Um, so as always, we're going to do our sign-off here uh, and we're going to go see if we can find somebody to raid. But if you would please remind them who you are, who you have been, and where you can be found on the internet, if indeed you can be found on the internet, starting with Vincent Page. Hey y'all, I've been Vincent Page. I've also been Ash Fireforge, your changeling rogue. Um, and if you guys want to hang out with me more uh, throughout the week when I'm not here playing D&D &D every other Friday with these lovely folks, uh, I'm on Twitch. Twitch.tv, Vincent Page. You know how to do the thing. Come on. Um, where we play lots of stuff. I've been playing lots of Sea Thieves, but honestly, I might play Baldur's Gate this weekend. I don't Ooh. know. We'll see what happens. I don't, I don't freaking know, man. Excellent. Uh, Omega. Hey, y'all. Uh, my name is Omega. I played uh, Peter Walhorn, the Valor Bar tonight. Um, you can find me on TikTok, OmegaMT42. I did post an update. Um, I just had a lot of stuff going on recently. Um, just within the past three months, I have had so much change <laughs> going on. Um, but uh, I will get back to it eventually. But uh, otherwise, you can find me here playing D&D every other Friday with these awesome folks. Wonderful. Um, Ozzy. I'm Ozzy. I played Cass, uh, Cass Amble Crown tonight, and honestly, I'm kind of excited to, because I feel like, you know, this has some kind of, like, this whole little dungeon has some kind of, like, significance to what's been going on with Cass, so I think it'll be interesting to see how that concludes. Yes. Uh, okay, and those of you watching, uh, listening on the podcast, uh, Pixel just made the sinister Pixel finger temple. <laughs> uh, and uh, bonus mom. Hi, I'm bonus mom, and tonight I was playing Wanderous, the nature domain cleric. And I was desperately trying to think of a secret. And I don't Thankfully, know we didn't have to do that. Yeah, that <laughs> you guys killed them before they could make to. you spill your guts. I try to live stream on TikTok Monday through Friday, sometimes yes, sometimes no, somewhere between 9 and 12 uh, Eastern Daylight Time. But my special, special thing coming up, and this is exciting and you all want to be there if you possibly can or catch the podcast because it will also be on Bonus Mom's Tavern in the podcast world. No remark from Northeastern England and me from Eastern Tennessee are going to get together Tuesday the 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight 
right time on Bonus Mom 70 on Twitch. And we are going to discuss in depth paranormal activity, ghost stories, things that go bump in the night. And you can be there, VP, because it's going to be at 1 p.m., not at your stream time. Uh, Noah Mark is a a paranormal investigator and bonus mom is a complete novice who knows nothing so join us it's going to be riveting a bit creepy and very interesting excellent uh and as always i have been uh your exciting uh horrible dungeon master your big pile of dead monsters and your creepy hallways uh pixel you can also find me here twitch.tv slash hammer pixel um and i play games is play games is um okay so we have a suggestion to do our good friend the reamses they're playing baldur's gate 3 or uh there's some folks also playing D, &D um dice cream sandwich uh they're doing like a big finale of their thing uh what do you guys want to do do you want to go uh computerized D, D or uh just people playing D, &D on the computer <laughs> Can I just say that Dice Cream Sandwich is one of the best names that I've ever heard in my entire life? It's pretty great. I think they're also like a, a big TikToker. Not that I really <laughs> know that, but I think that's who that is. But it doesn't matter to me. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Where do you want to go? Um, and while folks let's, are deciding, um, thank you guys for hanging let's, out. Uh, let's stream Dice Cream, but then our viewers will go where they want to because it's a free country. Sure. World. Okay, so we're going to raid Dice Cream Sandwich. I think we rated Reams like last week, so uh, that, that works out for me. So um, thank you guys for hanging out. Honestly, it means a ton to us that you all uh, chill with us for this horrifying adventure and all the fun stuff that we do over here. Um, ooh, next week is going to be the finale of Region of Bedegar. It should be a big yes. blowout ooh. boss battle. Uh, definitely check that out. And if you haven't caught up, it's on YouTube. You can go check it out. Uh, so if you are not subbed, there's a raid message. And if you are subbed, there's another one. And we're going to go raid our um, Dice Cream Sandwich. Be sure to send them the Yeet Fleet and Ages of Lionor and Bonus Bombs Tavern Love. And we will catch you guys next time.